Good evening. Welcome to the Planning Board for February 25th. And the first item on the agenda is our first public hearing on proposed uh, zoning bylaw amendments that will appear at town meeting in May. I don't think our first petitioner is here. So we can take these articles in any order. So we'll start with temporary banners. Mary, do you want to give the overview a little bit on each of them as, sure, from Zach? It's probably easiest to follow along with the zoning articles proposed for 2019 annual town meeting handout that's there, or if you've received information via the via email. Um, on the second page, temporary banners. Um, this was requested by the, um, by the Board of Selectmen. And the changes to the existing um, bylaw would allow banners to be hung over any public way, not just Main Street. It would increase the maximum number of days a banner could be displayed from 14 days up to 30 days. However, this, you know, that would all be still um, limited by whatever the Board of Selectmen uh, decides for that particular situation. And an increase in the maximum size of banners from 75 square feet to 180 square feet. 180 square feet reflects the normal size a banner is usually. Um, 75 square feet uh, was kind of a miscalculation when they first created this bylaw and they wanted it corrected because um, in the meantime, they've had to get variances for every single one. <laughs> so, <laughs> or something along those lines. So, um, so the proposed changes would simply uh, change the words uh, Main Street to public roadways. And I believe uh, the town council suggested public rights of way yep. um, rather than roadways. Um, and then 14 days to 30 days and 75 square feet to 180 square feet and um, they would still need to be authorized by the Board of Selectmen for, for use. Yeah, and the uh, Town Council also <coughs> suggested uh, Board of Selectmen and subject to such limitations on time, placement, and manner of display as it shall require, which is not, <coughs> not necessarily what's printed in um, our article. That so that clarifies it, yeah. Mm -hmm. So do any board members have any comments or questions? I know we, yes, Amy. Um, I do, and I brought this up last time. I, I think hanging them over other streets is a good idea since Main Street's going to be changing, um, and then I think increasing the size is fine. I'm concerned about um, increasing it from 14 to 30 days, and I know that it would be at their discretion, but I just know there are a lot of events in town, and if each person that requested a banner had it up for there for 30 days, there would only be 12 per year, and there's a lot more events. Like I know just recently EHOP requested a banner leading up to town meeting, which was May 6th, but the Faith Church also had a, a 6K coming up within that same time frame. And if we had been granted the whole month, like they wouldn't have any time at all. So I'm, I'm wary of increasing it to 30 days. Yeah, I, I have a similar um, thought as I was reviewing it as well. I don't know how anybody else, if mm. anybody else has any. Yeah. Just a one, uh, maybe a piggyback on that. Is it limited to just one banner during that time period, or can it be multiple banners? Oh, maybe, maybe not now that it's more than maybe one street. So there could be multiple banners on different streets. You could... Yeah. Okay. Um, are there any members of the public who came <clears throat> interested in speaking on this? Please come forward and introduce yourself. <coughs> Um, I'm Mary Arnott. I live at 51 Teresa Road, and um, I haven't been involved in the discussion yet, so I apologize. I don't have much background on this, but I wanted to know the definition of, well, first of all, public ways is going to be changed to right-of-ways. Is that it? Public right-of-ways. Okay. Is that any road or uh, street in Hopkinton that the town has responsibility for? In essence, could someone get approval to put a 180-square-foot banner over where I live, Teresa Road is an example. Technically, it would mean that, yes. Okay. So I, I object to that, that I wouldn't want to see the... If there were pol poles that you could hang from, but yeah. yes. Yeah, okay. The selectmen approved it. Well, street, pole, street light poles or things like that, they could hang them from? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so I will voice concern and objection for that. I would not want to see signs like that and um, banners in subdivisions and residential areas. 
Um, and then in terms of, I thought I heard Elaine say something about there could be many banners hung over these public right-of-ways at all at one time. Um, concern for safety of people going down Main Street and major areas, trying to read multiple banners as they're going through town, especially when we're going to have bike lanes. And uh, I would voice the same concern for multiple banners being hung over any public way where there might be many of them in a residential area where kids are playing and that sort of thing. So I, I urge you to reconsider the wording and I'll enter some restrictions on this. Thank you. Thank you. May, may I ask a question of the... Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm sorry, I missed your name, but... Mary. Um, I'm just curious, and uh, I don't know if... You know, this, this still would require approval by the selectmen. Um, so I'm curious if that changes your perspective at all, because I think the idea is to give them some discretion so they can evaluate and determine what's appropriate. I believe there should be more definition and restriction within the zoning law itself, and there could still be the selectmen input in terms of uh, what sign is put up. Uh, is, is it beneficial to the town to have that announcing something? Uh, I think it's too open the way it's written right now. Thank you. Thank you. I do see that we have the chairman of the board of selectmen. Do you, did you want to speak to it, Mrs. Wright? <laughs> Claire Wright, 28 Hayden Rail. Well, I wasn't going to speak to this, but relative to what Mrs. Arnott said about the selectmen then having a determination as to what the banner says, you will recall the notice sent to you by town council that you have to be very careful about regulating content. So for any board to start to weigh in on the particular banner mm -hmm. is probably a slippery slope. I think you'd be better to decide what we want to allow and either allow it or not and mm -hmm. hope that another board is going to do, <laughs> going right, to do the work. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, any other questions or comments? A clarifying question. Um, 180 square feet, is that the area that's allowed? I've I think that that's the typical size of the banner, and we weren't necessarily within the size of banners. Well, the, the, the maximum size now is 75 square feet. So right. there have been some larger than that in the past, but we do see... 75 square foot banners, and we see larger ones occasionally. In Holliston, they limit it to 75 square feet. So, okay. And so it doesn't take up the whole roadway. So yeah. You know. So way. half, like, or part, centered, sort of centered, on, centered, centered yeah. on the roadway. <clears throat> so uh, our job tonight is to um, to either to make changes to the wording if we want to, and either recommend it for town meeting or not recommend it for town meeting. When, when we were discussing it in Zach, I don't think the intent was ever to put it necessarily in residential areas. It was to allow for Hayden Row and, and banners in front of, like the school, as opposed to advertising for things that were school related on Main Street. I think Mary brings up a very good point in the fact that you can't, if you can't regulate content and you're allowing it everywhere, that maybe it's worthwhile to look for some sort of restrictive language so that it's over major roadways right, right. or <coughs> something that Main would, Street, 135, yeah. 85. You, you would think, to, to your point, you would think that if anybody's going to put up a banner, they want to put it, they can maximize the eyeballs that are going to see it, right? So what makes, typically it would make sense to go on some, somewhere like Teresa, but could somebody have some... Anybody could ask for I, it, though. Right, <laughs> somebody could ask, hey, I want to put this up. Maybe mm -hmm. they're trying to make a statement. But, it, but then it goes back to the Board of Selectmen has jurisdiction over yep. so allowing a banner. Madam Chairman, I guess yes. make one more point, too, is that there, there is currently a bylaw that does allow signage. The, the change here is, is really two things. The, the proposed wording changes three things, I believe. One is that instead of just over Main Street, it's yep. over public ways. <clears throat> yep. Two is potentially changing from 14, 14 days to 30 days. And yep. then three is the size of the banner. Right. So I think as we get back to content and discretion of the, the, the selectmen. Um, we're not regulating the content. No. Right. We're not. Right. Agreed. No. So I just, for me, I'm comfortable with the, the major public roadways language. I'm comfortable with increasing the signage. But personally, I, I prefer to leave it at 14 days. All right. So it, let me just say that I prefer 14 days, too. Let me see if I got that correct. You're fine with 180 square feet, the bigger size. 
um, and you would recommend um, limiting it to major roadways, some language to limit it to major roadways, which I also would. As written, yeah. right? I'd like to suggest it's actually like naming the street since we have Main Street. Maybe we say Main Street and Aiden Row. Well, no. so there's Wood, there's Wood Street, Street, there's Wood Cedar Street. Street, there's, there's you know, West Main, East Main. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so maybe we name those streets. A question for Elaine. Is there a definition of major roadways? No. 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 Numbered roadways? Like state mm -hmm. highways, you mean? State roads. 85 and 135. State roads. State roads. B Main Street. That wouldn't count West Main. Yeah. Maybe we should just list them out, the streets that we are thinking of then. So I'm actually amenable to that. I don't think that people really want signs and banners. I don't think the selectmen really want signs and banners in all little neighborhoods either. Um, Does anybody want to, uh, is everybody amenable to us, like holding this open for the next public hearing, mm -hmm. changing the wording um, in a way that town council approves for the major roadways we talked about, 85, 135, and West Main Street, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. And how about 14 days versus 30 days? I'm a 14-day person. 14. I'm, I'm just four. ke just keeping in mind that this is the maximum. So yeah. it's maximum 14 days versus maximum 30 days or something yeah. to that effect. So, so I have so no problem either way. My concern with that is that it seems like if the selectman granted a 30-day sign for one organization and then only granted 14 days for another, it could be considered discriminatory based on content. And I, so and I, and I think hands. that people tend to like d tend to kind of lose focus if you're leaving a sign up for 30 days. I think um, 14 days is much more effective. People are required to take it down, and then possibly there's another event piggybacking it. So I'm in favor of the 14 days keeping it. And that's one, two, three. How about another 14? 14, 14 four, eight, Fine. Carol. Leave as is, right? Either way. What, is it as is? 14, 14 as no, is. No, I'm, some of us are advocating for 14 days versus. No, but what is it written in today? It's 14, 14 now. today. They're at the proposed changes for 30. Right. So I'm okay with leave it at 14. All right. Um, and then the size. Is everybody okay with the maximum size potentially being 180 square feet? Mm -hmm. All right. So we should probably, um, can we vote it with those changes and just get the language? Can I do a quick follow-up? First of all, I appreciate, oh, here you are not 51 Teresa Road. I appreciate all your discussions. Very good, thank you. Uh, just to follow up on the number of signs that can go across a major roadway, uh, is there any thought to limiting that? I mean, could we have 10 banners across Main Street, you know, once the bike lanes and things are put in. I totally understand the question. Thank okay. you. Thank you. <coughs> so I don't, I, I don't necessarily feel compelled. I think that the Board of Selectmen, whatever Board of Selectmen it is, will use their cogent judgment. I think it sort of self-regulates in the fact that there's a cost associated with it doing it, and having ten banners is not necessarily more effective than having one well-placed banner. So I, I can't see people petitioning to put up. Yeah. And I mean, worst case, if we have a sort of the roads delineated, there wouldn't be the ability to have that many banners anyway. But I don't expect that that would happen. I'm OK leaving that out. Through the chair, um, I'm just thinking of Holliston. And um, along, along their main drive, you know, there's often one banner. And then a half a mile later, there's another banner for another Mm, two different topic, topics. you know, yeah. two different topics. It's not, it's not, generally speaking, the same organization multiple times. It's different things going on, and as long as they're sufficiently far apart, um, it works very well because you know, then it's you know, it's a quick glance and and so on. Oh, yes, to note that it has to be uh, where the poles are directly across from each other, and mm -hmm. that doesn't occur that often. So there are limited places unless you put up special poles for the mm -hmm. banners. It's limited to where the poles are perfectly aligned. Yeah. Okay. All right. Is, uh, are we interested in uh, voting it with the changes as we described? I, guess I would also be comfortable limiting it to no more than four banners at any one time. If, uh, or like you said, there are not that many places you can actually put it. I was just wondering, question, um, I'm just wondering, in the application, is there an, a 
base for the number of banners they're planning to put up before you bring it to the board of selectmen? Uh, there isn't an application form, but they do identify the location. There's only ever really been one location, That's right? That's where the poles are crossed yeah. from each other. Yeah. So we've never had a situation where we've had multiple banners before because it's only ever been Because it's only Main been allowed at Main Street, yeah. Plus you have to well, consider that the poles are going to go away. Main Street poles, right. Which is yeah. I a think part of the reason that we wanted to right. allow it in other sections. But there also, there's also been multiple banners, though, um, uh, by the tennis courts. So there has been. On the, not uh, across on the, the road, but on yeah. the fence. Not across yeah. the road. Mm -hmm. Um, so just discussion, I'm, I'm looking at what it's replacing and what it's replacing says that the sign shall be removed within two business days of the event. It doesn't, so not does that, that, that doesn't change that, right? No, it doesn't change that. Because we we're not changing that part I of the bylaw. It remains the same. But it sounds like you're replacing the whole paragraph with what you have there, which the way I'm looking at it online. No, we just put no. the language that was changed and didn't write everything. It's just an so, excerpt. So what we're looking at is not the exact wordage then. It's not the full wordage. It is the exact wordage of, of the that sentences. Paragraph, but yes. not the full wordage in the but, bylaw. I mean, maybe I'm looking at an old one, but it says such banners should not be displayed for more than 14 days before an event. It shall be removed within two business days of the event. The size of the banner should now exceed 75 square feet. So it sounds like you're, unless I'm looking at an yeah. old version of it. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I don't think we've changed that recently, right? Is this in our past. packet or on the website? Huh? Is this in, in our, our packet? It's on the website. He's looking at on the, the website. website. It's not even the website. It's a, a copy that I was sent recently with, like, in the, the last zoning. two years. Yeah. Do we have the zoning bylaws? We are screaming through this public hearing, you guys. It's an awesome job, by the way. <laughs> well, she's looking at it, Madam Chairman. Yes. Uh, just, I had a question on the 180 square feet. Square feet. That's two and a half times larger than what it is today. No. Is there any rationale as to? No. That's it. Really, 75 square feet. This is how it was explained to me. Is that that is not the size that it is normally. It was put in there incorrectly, and they've had to get special variances to get a normal size banner up. So it's 180. Because they up. they made a mistake in the way they put it in. I'm going to 180 being now that I I don't know what that represents. Well, I, it's, I just I really, it's two feet by almost eight feet, so that would be very reasonable going. But a banner the usually goes all the way across. So, right. you know that's so it doesn't have words on the whole thing, thing, but it has <laughs> 75 square feet is 25 by three feet, so three feet high, 25 feet wide, right. and what is a road by 40 feet? Yeah, the roads are 40 yeah. feet. So EHOP wrote the bylaw several years ago, and we based the 75 <coughs> 75 square feet based on what they allow in Holliston, which yeah. doesn't mean we have to do the same here. And I believe the Family Day banner was the 180 square feet and okay. had to get special permission. So Okay. So that language is not in the bylaw? Is okay. it a previous version, maybe? Why don't I sync up with the afterward, Elaine, because one I have starts off with temporary banners made displayed over Main Street by community, civic, and nonprofit <coughs> organizations. No, that's the old bylaw uh, that was um, changed. Oh, so we did change uh, that with the last year or two. It's not content neutral, so that was changed several years ago. So you must not have the latest version. Yeah, let me sync up with okay. Elaine offline. All right. Thank you. All right. <coughs> so uh, just to repeat, if we're ready to uh, make decisions on this, it would be the major, the major rights of ways that we discussed, 85, 135, West Main Street. East Main Street. East Main Street. That's 135, isn't it? No. Isn't West right? Main yes. and yes. East Main all 135? No, no. 135, 135 is Wood Street. 135 is Wood Street. Oh, oh. oops. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, and um, for we're leaving it at 14 days, not changing it to 30 days. Yep. And we are okay increasing the size to 180 square feet. Yes. Okay. So um, I'll entertain a motion to put it forward that way onto the warrant with town council's um, 
suggested wording as well. I'll make a motion to um, move forward with the proposed changes of major right of way, keeping it at 14 days and not exceeding 180 feet on the banner size. Second. All those in favor? No discussion. Aye. Aye. Oh, sorry. Is there more discussion? All those opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Awesome. Look at that. At this rate, in two months, we'll be done with the public hearing discussion. All right. The second, the second one is the commercial solar photovoltaic installation um, screening. So Zach was asked to look at um, what might be possible to strengthen some of the screening potential within the wording of our existing bylaw. Um, and keeping in mind that um, there's a lot of legal restrictions on how much we can restrict. Um, so the existing um, wording has the visual impact of the commercial solar voltaic installation, including all accessory structures and appurtenances, shall be mitigated. All accessory structures and appurtenances should, should shall be architecturally compatible with each other whenever reasonable structures shall be shielded from view by vegetation and or joined and clustered to avoid adverse visual impacts. <coughs> Methods such as the use of landscaping, natural features, and fencing may be utilized. The sole suggestion that we had coming from Zach after our discussion was to add the words forming an effective year-round screen, which is um, which is a term used in other bylaws that we have. So we just borrowed it from, from one, some um, other bylaws. And, um, and so that was the, the one suggestion that we had. Um, there's, there's debate about whether or not that really strengthens anything and why bother. Um, so that's, that's certainly reasonable. Um, the uh, town council also said sh we should be more specific, but I'd like to point out that the existing language isn't very specific at all anyhow. Um, and so it really would mean rewriting the whole thing if we were to get more specific about it, about, you know, who should, who should be able to be screened, um, abutters at the same level, abutters at higher levels, or, or so on. I don't, you know. To the chair, I, I think the word effective um, class really defines that judicious point. <coughs> I mean, I think effective is interpreted as a screening element high above, down below, um, obtrusive to passerby. I mean, I think it says a lot of things, and I think that when, when that does come to us, um, it's interpretive, and, and we, can, we can rule on, you know, whether that, whether, you know, whether it specifically abides by that. Um, so I would be in favor of the language. Okay. <clears throat> Anybody else have any comments or questions? I, you know, I want to, I just want to say that I'm a little contemplative of um, town council's suggestions of um, trying to define what, what that means. And I know that, Deb, you just said that you think that it makes sense as effective, but it, effective is in everybody's personal, um, for me, it's not a specific term. Um, are we trying to screen from all abutting properties, from public ways? And then, um, and then he asks a, a, a really difficult question, I think, from distant properties at higher elevations. I think I'm mostly concerned with um, from abutting properties. Direct abutters? Yes. Anybody? How about public roadways, like scenic roadways, for, <coughs> for example? <laughs> I guess I wouldn't want to say all roadways because some commercial roadways it wouldn't matter at all, but maybe scenic ways. Mm -hmm. All right. So Amy says from abutting directly abutting properties. My concern would be that if you start being specific about what you're screening for or for what purpose, then you eliminate the necess necessity to screen for other purposes, and I think it's property. Relative, you know, in in this situation, maybe it's the abutting neighbors. In another situation, it might be that you want to screen from what's looking down from above. I think it depends on the property. <clears throat> so I would be reluctant to to specify exactly what you want to screen against. Because <coughs> that to me implies that not screening against things other that things. are not mentioned is okay. 
I mean, Anybody else want to? Any members of the public interested? Sure. Mary Arnott, 51 Teresa Road. Um, in my subdivision off of Alexander Road, um, beautiful homes, and behind them were beautiful woods. And there was a solar panel field put in there, a very large one. Um, I'm a little embarrassed to say that when the discussion was going on about that, um, one, I wasn't around, and two, I didn't get involved. And the other day, I took a ride down Alexander Road. I was horrified. What was beautiful scenes from the backyards of all these homes is now the solar panel field. Uh, I've got to believe it's going to impact the value of their homes um, and, of course, the view. So I'm particularly interested in terms of what kind of screen such a facility as that would have. And if you haven't seen it, I encourage each of you to ride down Alexander Road and look at those houses. Now, I do remember one neighbor telling me she wasn't too concerned about it at the time because the developer said, well, there's going to be a lot of trees. You won't even see it. You can see every bit of the solar panel field from Alexander Road and certainly from their backyards. Is that development complete, that solar farm complete? I think so. Mm -hmm. So any screening that would have been included? We can check on that. Yeah. yeah. So I, I, will whatever, I, I will definitely drive down and look or, at it. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, so I'm particularly interested in this now. Um, it's not going to affect my backyard. I've got woods and then I've got houses. Nobody's going to build back there. But I am concerned for my neighbors in the community if something like this is allowed to happen again. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Thank you. All right. Any other? Um, uh, yeah, absolutely. Hi, Tom. Hi. <clears throat> Pardon my voice. <clears throat> Tom Shambo, 15 Wilson Street here in Hopkinton. Um, the language that I keep reading over and over again that sort of bothers me here is whenever reasonable. And I don't know what reasonable means at any point in time. So my suggestion was <clears throat> possibly putting in um, just striking whenever reasonable, just say structure shall be shielded from view by vegetation. Um, there is the proposed solar field coming back uh, right behind my house. I have driven by Alexander Road, and I really don't want that look on the back side of, or the side of my property off of the scenic road on Wilson Street. Um, if I can, you know, help you know, with this language, maybe that will help that situation. Okay, thank you. Yeah. All right, any board members want to weigh in with suggestions, changes, or a proposal? I just have a question for Elaine, actually, with regards to the, the, the language of whenever reasonable. And I'm wondering if there's a, if that's common language in this type of situation or if that's something that's somewhat unusual. I feel like we've seen that elsewhere, but. I think the intent was to give the board flexibility and leave it open for a situation perhaps where it abutted wooded land or you know conservation land or something like that. So I think that the intent of putting that in there was to give the board some flexibility when it reviews the applications, depending on the site. It's going to blow away. Mm -hmm. um, so, could we? You have to be up here so people at home can hear you. <coughs> Maybe we could replace it with unless unreasonable. I, I think having, Madam Chairman, having whatever is reasonable makes it a discussion point for the board to engage with the proposed applicant around. And then I think it's up to the jurisdiction of the board to determine what is reasonable versus what's not reasonable. It just, and, yep. it just gives flexibility. That. That's and, and that was sort of my basis on effective year round is that that opens it up to interpretation as to well does a can <coughs> live up high on a hill and and that coverage will not be effective um, um, effective meaning it's not going to do its job it's not going to screen um, but it gives us the <coughs> prudence to 
to make that determination and that flexibility. Um, I, I don't find the what, wherever reasonable um, offensive. I don't. I mean, uh, I don't know if it really makes it any different. Let me just ask this: Does anybody want to contemplate striking the words "whenever reasonable"? I would be okay with striking the words "whenever reasonable" and making it the by default that it has to have this because we could always waive a requirement, right? Or no? Unless, unless it says in the bylaw it would uh, need a variance from the board. That is tough then, because there are some situations in a commercial area maybe screening would not be necessary. To the chair? Yeah. I think whatever reasonable has to be there for solar panels because you can't completely screen it because the sun has to hit them. You know, so they're, it's not like you can block off. I think that's, this, if you don't have a wherever reasonable it's, you're saying it has to be shielded, and uh, there might be some situations where you can't. Well, so uh, just devil's advocating. Um, I think that that would mean to me that it just wasn't the right site for solar panels, right? If you're looking downhill at something, say it again. If you're looking downhill at something, I mean, I don't think you. So could. that that is the thing that sort of um, that hangs me up is you know being at. at, at whatever distance from whatever height there isn't so for me whenever reasonable um, striking those words doesn't change that but I don't know if it if that I'm correct legally right so forming an effective year-round screen I mean whenever reasonable doesn't address maybe it does address other properties at a height from a distance that you can't necessarily reasonably shield from mm -hmm. yeah and I have a, a clarification question for through the chair yeah. um, for Elaine as well, and that is that um, the wording of the bylaw is that is that superseded once conditions have been written for a particular development? What do you mean? Um, as in, you know, so so once the planning board has written a list of conditions and approved a set of plans, including landscaping or fencing and all those other things. Um, is it possible still to enforce based on the wording in this bylaw or? So that could be a difficult situation if the board approves a plan which it believes will provide effective year-round screening but in practice it doesn't It doesn't, work. yeah. I'm not sure yeah. where we stand at that point. I think, you know, and I think that certainly is some of the problem is that it's after the fact that, you know, and I, I haven't been involved in every single one of these solar, um, solar developments, but what probably was viewed as what would be effective screening has not proven to be effective screening. And what, what methods do we have to mitigate, you know, so. So I guess my sense is, I mean, the bylaw still applies. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, the board has approved a plan, so zoning enforcement would have to determine whether there was an effective year-round screen. So it would be up to the zoning enforcement officer at that point, and presumably they could enforce the bylaw and require more screening. But it would be a difficult, difficult thing to do. Okay. Madam Chairman? Yeah, hold Sorry. on one second. Would it, yeah. would it be more effective to have it listed as a condition on the plan? A condition... To have, the, say, there forming a criteria an, on the on the approval could, process to have it there as opposed to in the bylaw. You could. It just um, screening is subjective, mm -hmm. and it's also, you know, somebody would have to walk the entire perimeter to observe the whole thing too. Theoretically, so I mean, it's a subjective thing that someone would be trying to enforce. And I think that would be the difficult part when the board approves a plan which shows the vegetation or the fencing, whatever it's going to be, that's something people can count on. It's concrete, yeah. Gary. Yeah, I, and I guess just to sort of recap what I'm hearing here is mm -hmm. that um, it sounds like we want some degree of flexibility here because there may be situations that, that require more or less screening than others. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and I guess what I go back to is the only thing that's really changing here in the bylaw is the addition of the effective year-round screen. Mm -hmm. Everything else is the same that it was before. And so in my opinion, that seems like, and I realize even looking at town council's comments that, that, that there's maybe some ambiguity there, but um, I look at this as, as just adding that effective year-round piece to it, and, and I think that's a reasonable request, and I'm, I'm supportive of it. Okay. Anybody else? Last comments? I have one, one thing that we haven't really talked about very much. Um, we've talked about vegetation, but we really haven't talked about earth berming. Um, there's a really effective earth berming project for solar um, over in um, Ashland, um, down past the state park, um, on the backside of Wilson. Mm -hmm. um, and so here we're talking about vegetation, but we really haven't discussed um, the effectiveness of earth. Um, <coughs> So how do, you, how do you word that? I'm just putting it back to people and wondering what their opinion of that would be. How would you, would you re-describe that? Because I think, I, I think that <coughs> something that nobody's approached us about, and I think it's an effective means of uh, screening. Would that be considered a natural feature? Or can you add it into that would list? It would be a structural feature. Landscaping, new natural structural feature. Features. You know, it would be a well, landscaping. Earth I mean, burning? I, I don't think Earth it's... Earth burning landscaping? Earth burning landscape. Is it landscaping? Yeah. Would it fall yeah. under so landscaping? It's, so it's listed. No. So it might count under. Any final thoughts before we contemplate leaving it exactly as it was written? Yeah, I'm kind of in. 20 minutes. <laughs> Madam Chair, I'm going to be Gary's camp on this one. I think, you know, putting the effective year round screening adds another level of discussion, right? Mm -hmm. It's a little bit vague but it's better than I think what it exists today which doesn't include that and then I think it's up to the applicant and the board to discuss what that effective screening looks like whether it's vegetation landscaping what have you I, I agree I am also amenable to just adding into the last sentence landscaping earth berming natural features and fencing maybe if it's an effective methodology that is being currently used I'm happy to specify it doesn't mean that you have to do it. Hold on. Could you say, put it something along the lines of such as? Well, it says examples? methods such as the use of landscaping, natural features, and fencing may be utilized. I was just suggesting just adding there. earth burning sure. in there. I think that's right. Oh, so, thank you. Yeah. Yes, Mary. For a follow up, Mary are not 51 Teresa Road. Um, difficult task ahead of you on this one. I'm concerned about effective and types of screening. Um, I do believe that when the solar field was put in on Alexander Road behind Alexander, those houses, uh, they said the trees would effectively yeah. um, obstruct the view from the backyards mm -hmm. and from the road. That didn't happen. Yeah. Um, and so I. I'd like to see maybe some tougher language that says not effective screen, but um, up, actually obstructs the view from the abutters um, so that this doesn't happen again. And I, again, I urge you before you would send this forward to town meeting or whatever the next step is that you drive down to uh, Alexander Road, excuse me, and look at what happened there. Okay. Thank you. Um, so Segwaying on to yeah. that, she mentioned what we're um, screening from, which Gary yeah. alluded to, which town council suggested. Have we talked about that all? Did I miss that? Or We did talk about it, and um, we were concerned that if we specified abutting residential properties as an example, that leaves out anything else that might come up that we want to um, consider as effective okay, or thanks. reasonable. Um, so we kind of circled right back to effective yep. screening. Um, I, I want to make a point for everybody who's paying attention to this and, and taking time to make comments too, is that whatever we put forward to town meeting, um, every town meeting member is entitled to propose amendments on town meeting floor, and there's a there's a very clear and um, accessible process to do that. So if you aren't satisfied with the final wording that comes out of this public hearing 
you can still take it to town meeting um, and propose changes as long as it's within the four corners which it's a little subjective um, from the town moderators um, viewpoint often as I'm saying this I wonder if it would work in this case because you can't build in more um, but you might be able to you might be able to it's 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 not a perfect process but definitely um, uh, look into it if you're not satisfied with what happens out of this public hearing for sure and just to add on to that the, the format for doing that is to have it pre-written out and given to the presentation guys when you first walk in it's easiest if you have it written to start and it's uh, given to the folks at the back who can put right. it up on the screen correct yep. thank you yep. um, how, how are we feeling as a board with this as written um, we simply added in the earth berming on the list between landscaping and natural features on the last sentence. Is there any, was anybody willing Did to Did everybody that? get a chance to w weigh in adding the obstructive word? I, I thought it was the a pretty... The what? She, um, Mary. Mary. Mary had said that um, she forming an effective obstructive year-round screen, or is that just not good English or is it I mean is there a better way to say it isn't that what a screen is I think I am not about. particular in favor of the word obstructive I'm sorry I no that's okay sorry saying that. I think that's just what we're talking about if you say obstruct and then you guys say where you're obstructing from and then it's I, I, I also an effective year barrier I also think the obstructive term starts to cross the line if we go back to the guidance that we've received from the state <coughs> on solar if we start obstructing things yes, that's true that that's true okay just inherently becomes yeah. concerning to me and uh, i guess to me it's it's redundant with screening and um going back to mary's point i also think that you know what's on alexander now um you know this is the winter time and and there is substantially less screening there now than there is in the summertime so to me to some degree i think this is at least at least partially addressing the concern. I also, I also wanted to say Alexander. that there's an opportunity here for us, I think, within the planning board's process um, to make sure that we do condition solar farms thoughtfully, like we necessarily put an intentional um, action item and we, have, we contemplate some, you know, some, uh, some methodology where we verify that it is an effective screen and you know some corrective measure if it's not it's going to going suggest forward. maybe we i'm fine with adding the earth primer but that we continue till the next meeting and we drive, we all take a chance to drive by alexander road I, I did i have driven by and i think that there is a screen but the problem is the elevation is high so you can still see from the back it would like they i don't think they were going to build like, a two-story we didn't require them to build like a two-story um, barrier, right? Mm -hmm. now, to effectively screen the whole solar farm, I think they really would have had to go up pretty high. <coughs> Is there anywhere in the zoning laws a, de de a definition for screening or effective screening, or no. is it? Is it something you can write in what the definition of effective screening means? I think in one one place we talk about um, year-round screening from the ground, from view from the ground, so that it's clear that you're not screening from looking down, but that's one one location but again you know this is this is just the situation at Alexander Road some of the abutters are on higher ground they're and they're lower. direct they're abutters lower, but they're and you can see them. but no I yeah. I, I know yeah. of one that's a uh, higher ground and so you know it's looking down from windows in the back of theirs you know it's so so direct abutters ground level well it's like ground level where you know ground level is higher or lower <laughs> sometimes that's, so well directing means impenetrable i mean you can't yeah. see through it and that's a wall yeah that's something could be very tall and, and not necessarily attractive or desirable that's in true in every mm -hmm. instance through, through the chair yeah might i suggest that we because this is a near and dear topic for us screening yeah. for solar yeah. farms that we um, um schedule a uh, post site walk of alexander road and just as a group take a look at it and because I mean no, mostly we do pre-site walks right but maybe for this situation we could do a post-site walk so I I actually would be thrilled not to schedule a, a necessary one but invite everybody who wants to go and look at it but sure. I mean 
I think that's probably a good suggestion that we um, at least drive by the one that we did most recently um, and what we all had in mind and yeah, what the okay. result seems to be at this time. Uh, so you're just suggesting an informal one? Yeah. Yeah, which I'm fine yeah. with. Yes. Yeah. yes. And then we, we come back. That was Amy's suggestion, too. So um, how does everybody feel about that? We'll readdress this at the next public hearing after everybody's had a chance to do that. Sure. All right. Look at us go. Number three. <laughs> Educational okay. uses in industrial A, industrial B, and professional office districts. Do you want me to give a yes, summary? Yes, thank okay. you. I'm sorry, Mary. You're right. being a champ. Okay. Um, so the proposal is to add language to three different districts, industrial A, industrial B, and the professional office districts, specifically allowing educational uses, vocational schools by right. Um, even though they are not specifically listed right now, they are technically allowed because of state law, Dover Amendment. Um, so it's not that we're allowing a use that's not allowed already. It's just adding it to our bylaws. And I don't recall who, who how this was proposed, but some of the um, rationale behind it was um, that at the professional office district, which is located on what street? Somebody knows Franklin? No. Franklin. Um, that would be a great place for vocational or technical school. Um, or that, you know, would be a potential use for it. And, um, and again, this is something that, you know, may or may not be something we would want to encourage in this town, but, um, but it's already allowed by state law. Okay, so um, I've just made my point that uh, I don't necessarily have any objection calling out things that are allowed, but they, it is allowed by right in every district. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm not sure that's this is the most effective strategy for encouraging development that we want to see. So I, I'm not a huge fan <coughs> of doing that, which does not necessarily have to be done, but it also doesn't hurt us to have it in there. I think the inclusion was that um, the reason was it was uh, the Dover Amendment was for public schools, public educational facilities, where if we put educational facilities, it would be, could be private as well. It's, no, the Dover Amendment Dover covers well, private. everything. It does? Education. Yeah. Private as well? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, just to speak my piece on this, I, I was not at the Zach hearing or the Zach meeting when we discussed this. Um, personally, I'm not necessarily opposed to them. I'm not sure that as a town we want to encourage them. I agree that, that Franklin Road would be a great place for that use, but it is allowed. And to put something on town meeting floor, <coughs> it's not in essence going to change anything I'm not sure is worth putting on town meeting floor. I, I, agree, I agree with, with that. Carol, particularly considering that we've got a lot of potential amendments here. so just being sensitive to how much we put in, in front of town meeting. Would, this doesn't feel necessary to me. I, I would agree. Just, just to Carol's point and Gary's point. I don't know why we need it. Um, any members of the public? Yeah. Couple. Yeah. <laughs> Bria McNamara, 39 Oakhurst Road. Um, this came about because um, we're trying to find some uses that are not destructive uses for the town. It's Zach, and uh, Franklin Road was one of the examples, but um, when people are coming and looking at businesses at this town, they need some more direction. We have sort of a fuzzy way of looking at businesses when they come and call. And this was one of the ideas that was brought up and was discussed at Zach, that if we had a specific area that we encouraged this kind of use, we would be encouraging a friendly Dover Amendment for where we ha would have more say, basically. That was where this all came from. And I, I would encourage, especially Franklin Road, for this. I don't know about the other industrial uh, districts, but you know, this, this makes some sense because that is a, a, a neighborhood area. Uh, it, Franklin Road is what zone? Professional office. Professional office. Is that and that's the only professional office, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. That's the only professional yeah, office the, district is on Franklin Road? Yep. Um, I would support it if you eliminated the other two districts. Industrial A and Industrial B? Correct. 
because there's a higher, better value use for those properties from a tax? I, I think until we figure out exactly incentive. where we want those areas to go, they can still go there, right? So we, we yes. also know that but they do can we want still to go encourage there. it. Right. I was going to say, why would you want to limit it? Why? But my question is, I, I think it's great. It, it, it's great for, for your job to encourage it, but I don't think it's necessarily our job to encourage it. Right. Um, I, I think the rules are written as they are, um, and, you know, you could put a flyer together that would say that it's for educational purposes and we'd love you to use it, but I don't necessarily think it needs to be changed here. Amenable to including just the professional office to and just eliminate the industrial A and B for the, the change. Matt, Madam Chair, I've lived in a town where there's been schools who have, you know, been a major asset to a community. Um, they attract people that are educated. They attract people who want to invest in the town. It's not just a one-way street. So in this particular case in Franklin Road, I do believe very strongly that that would make sense. I'm not the broker on the property at all. I have nothing to do with it. I did talk to the broker, however, to find out what had been the obstacles for taking care of that property. And the major problem with that property, it is, a, it is a commercial building, and it's a large commercial building. And literally, he's gone through so many people who say it's too far from the highway. Mm -hmm. So if we want to be faced with an empty building for several years, that's what we're faced with. But if we want to come and give some direction to people who want to come to this community in this kind of way, it's a positive thing. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Claire. I'll come to you, Mary, in a second. Claire Wright, 28 Hayden Road. I just want to mention, um, I would believe that any educational institution is keenly aware of the protections that are invited to them through the Dover Amendment. They, they don't need to be told. Um, we all know how long town meeting goes, so I am not in favor of things being put on that are not really necessary. And I would just add that where well, one person thinks perhaps Franklin Road is a wonderful idea, um, on the other hand, were to say a community college come in there, with a huge commuter population, I could see a lot of people in Franklin Road thinking that the kind of traffic would, that would bring in would not be such a good idea. So, you know, that's debatable. But my point is, I know educational institutions are well aware of their rights. So I wouldn't support taking up town meeting time with something that is really not required. Thank you. And Mary, did you have something? Well, it might be a new point by now, but... <laughs> Uh, Mary Arnott, 51 Teresa Road. Um, in looking at this, I had a lot of things go through my mind. Franklin Road might be a great location for something like this, but there are other smaller professional office uh, locations and industrial A and B zoning locations in town, right on Main Street, for example. And there are also residential areas very close or mixed in with these as the zoning changed. So I had questions like, well, what size of vocational school or educational use? Uh, what's the definition of vocational? Could somebody open up um, a school where they taught uh, drummers as vocational and they're drumming all day long and there's a house right next door to this professional office location? So it, it looks like an easy thing, just don't put it on because it's already allowed. But now I'm questioning, oh, I need to go back and look what is allowed then because you could be affecting, you know, neighbors and, and areas. The Dover you Amendment allows a very broad use for educational uses. And I think Mrs. Wright is correct. Those educational uses are, you know, are keenly aware of their rights. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh-huh. All right. What's our feeling? Do people want to eliminate industrial A and industrial B and keep the professional office district? I am in favor of not having it on the warrant. I have, like, decided to go with my first thought that it just isn't necessary. And I would support I would that. I agree with you. That's one, two, three, four. I'm leaning towards keeping it in the professional office. Professional. Time. I would support eliminating it entirely for a town meeting. Okay. That's five. Okay. So let's take a formal vote um, uh, that the planning board uh, does not recommend including this 
zoning change on town meeting warrant. I'll make that motion. S second. Second. Uh, any discussion? Can I just ask a question? Uh, yeah. Did you want to remove it from the warrant? Yes. Okay. That was what I was suggesting. That's what the yes. we're voting, okay. correct? Yes. Um, all those in favor? Vote. Yes. Voting to remove it, correct? Remove it. Yes. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Or nay. <laughs> <laughs> any abstentions? Okay. Thank you. Can I ask the vote again? It's kind of hard to hear. Amy, you're the only no. You're the no to yeah. no to remove. Yeah. Okay. All right. Listen, we got five minutes to do one more. We, okay. can, we can do this. I don't know about this one. Indoor, um, indoor recreation uses in industrial A and B districts. Um, the proposal is to add indoor recreation use by right in industrial A and to change it from special permit to a use by right in industrial B. The definition of indoor recreation, which is in our bylaws right now, um, a facility within a permanent building or structure designed and equipped for the conduct of sports, athletic, or other leisure time activities, provided that all activities are conducted entirely within the building and no noise generated within the facility may be heard at the property line. Such activities may include swimming, skating, indoor skydiving, soccer, bowling, and other similar uses, but shall not include arcades and billiard balls <laughs> unless accessory to another indoor recreation use, which we discussed was the music man um, I was reference. just going to say, um, <laughs> is, I mean, is that, was that specifically, that's not new? Though. No, that's no, not that's, that's existing. So all, all it was doing was changing the, um, the allowance you know, by right in industrial A and B. That's the proposal. All right. Any quick discussion? <laughs> Go ahead. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I also, this was, they, they were very busy the night that I was not at. <laughs> <laughs> I was not there for this discussion either. I do not take issue with having this use allowed as a special permit to make it a by right use I think is problematic. You've got no regulation over it. It says noise from inside <coughs> as a reference noise from outside if you have, you know, things powering up, parachuting. I just, the use being what it is and the potential for what it could be, I think it's something that should be looked at a little more closely than, okay, so long as it's not a pool hall, we're good. We don't want billiards, man. Just as long as there's no <laughs> billiards. No billiards. Um, okay, <laughs> Industrial A and Industrial B is all of South Street and the, ho the hotel area district and Hart. And um, Lumber, uh, Street. Lumber Street. Lumber Street. Lumber Street. Right. Lumber Street and also um, uh, off Cedar Street uh, with a portion where the solar was behind the snow dump. Stump. Mm -hmm. That's, that's the industrial. Design. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Thank you. It took me a long that's time. That's a small to section. That. Small yeah. section. Yeah. The Cedar Street side. No, but just like one acre or something or a couple acres. Not a big section, right? Not huge. And it, the proximity of residences is minimal? Well, no, South not Street, there. above there, there's a couple houses. Cedar Street, I mean. I can put up a zoning map if that, that would be oh, great. Yeah. yeah. Okay, awesome. But it's primarily the South Street, which abuts um, the, yeah. the lakefront property. Yes. Yeah. And then Elmwood Park, which abuts Elm Street. Right. And the industrial uh, A and B is what color? Pink. Pink. Well, it's all I'm sorry. Pink. Industrial A is pink. And then B is? Purple. 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 Okay. Can we zoom in a little? Yeah, it will be good. <laughs> There's one street I can't read. <laughs> so, that's too far. That? Oh, yeah. um, what, so who proposed, um, uh, what was the rationale for, I, I understand okay, by it was, right makes it the easier. Chamber of from Commerce. the Chamber of okay. Commerce. Um, they, they looked at a number of different uses and um, changing things from special permit to by right mm -hmm. um, as a matter of, uh, um, making it easier and less disincentive for small businesses um, to go through the special permit process. So um, okay. this was just one of several different things that they suggested maybe one we would want to consider. All right. Um, so we've heard from Carol. Anybody else have comments? So second Carol's comment there. I think, you know, it, 
by special permit still allows the potential facility to go forward. I don't think it's onerous on either a small business or a larger business to kind of put forward their proposal in front of the board and have the board then grant the uh, by, um, by special permit the ability to go forward with whatever indoor activity they're looking to do. But by doing by giving them by right takes away a degree of control that I think I think the board I think that's why the board's here to be able to kind of do that. I don't think it creates undue burden for a small business or large business to, you know, put forward with a special permit application. Anybody, anybody else? <coughs> anybody from the public? Yes. Good evening. Ted Barker Hook, 75 Grove Street, also a member of Zach, also apps the day we voted on this. <laughs> I don't have anything new to add, except I'm with Carol. I also would have voted no for this in favor of a special permit. So while the vote was exactly what the document says, the room feeling was a little bit different from the document's vote. So I just wanted to add that there was a little bit more discussion on Zach than the vote might indicate. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. All right. Um, so we're going to pause and we are going to entertain a motion to open and continue the public hearing on Mass Monarch Woods, West Elm Street. Um, they have requested a continuance to March 25th. And what time would that, would we have available? at 8.30 and that also extend the deci decision deadline to April 9th, 2019. Anybody willing to make that motion? So moved. So moved. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. So, back to indoor uses. I, uh, indoor recreation. I'm actually an enthusiastic proponent of this indoor recreation idea, frankly, and would love to see it happen. <laughs> I think that it would uh, it would attract a lot of what we would like, and I'm not even not in favor of billiards, although I don't care about billiards <laughs> I don't care either. Um, I also see the value of the special permit process, um, and I'm particularly compelled by the noise argument. I have no idea what generates indoor skydiving that my kids <laughs> find so fun, but they have to travel to New Hampshire to do it. Um, but I have no idea if that is a if it's a uh, onerous noise generator on the outside. Um, so, um, I'm in, so I, I would support I'd like it. like the opportunity to look at it. All right. So, this was to change it to by right. So, is uh, there? Uh, it, are we amenable to voting not to include this on the warrant? Can I just clarify? It will be allowed by special permit in both districts. It is allowed. It, by special. Special. it, it is already allowed is already. by special permit in both no. districts. Is that no. correct? No, it is Only allowed in, in industrial B by special permit. Okay, I'm sorry. Right now, and not allowed in industrial. It's a. not. It's not listed <coughs> in industrial A at all. Remind me, pink is. Purp yeah, purple is industrial. Well, South we don't South have Street. it up here anymore. South Street, South Street. South Street. Okay, industrial and A is South Street. Yeah which seems like it would be more amenable to this, but that is not where it's allowed. So, uh, so, I think so, so what if we modified the wording to instead of permitted by right um, for the areas that aren't, don't have permitted by special permit, that we permitted those areas, those industrial areas, so that recreation could go there, but still by special permit. So special, just adding the other Correct. zone. The other industrial zone. A yeah. by special permit. By so special. Keep, keep it as it is in industrial B, but add industrial A in as a possible site by, with by special, special permit. permit. Uh, I would agree with that. Correct. I'm, I'm, I'm totally fine yeah. with that. I would support that, but I do, I do still support by right in both districts. I really don't see the issue with indoor I would recreation love use. To see this happen. And I, and I do feel like special permit <laughs> process for small businesses is, is a disincentive. So. <coughs> um, by right, and if that gets voted down, we could kind of make an amendment or a change. Yes. Um, so, but I wanted to make sure um, we heard. So, um, all right. So, how many people would uh, would agree with changing it to by right? 
in both districts as it's written. One. Okay. All right. So, um, um, can I have a motion? So we're we're gonna we're voting. I think to um, keep it as is in industrial B mm -hmm. with a special permit and add industrial A with a special permit process to allow it. All right. So you want to make that motion? Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll make the motion as defined. We're adding uh, industrial A. Uh, not by right, but by special permit. And keeping industrial B as is, which is by special permit. I'll second that. All right. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? I just want to, I'll review the hearing notice that went out. If we need to advertise that for another hearing, we'll do that for the March 25th meeting. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Keeping us legal. I like that. <laughs> Excellent work. Um, okay, next one. Yes, accessory retail to manufacturing use. Okay. The proposal would allow an associated accessory retail use within the industrial A and B districts um, with a maximum area for the retail use to be 5,000 square feet. So essentially, it means if there's a business in industrial A or B that does manufacturing or something <coughs> along those lines, we would allow a retail outlet associated with that same business up to 5,000 square feet. And that would be by right. And currently, is it allowed at all? No. No, it's not allowed at all. So, so it would be adding it by right um, for existing usage. And um, town council essentially just uh, changed some of the wording from accessory to associated use because um, felt that was clearer from the legal standpoint. So the only question I have, and I don't know that it changes how I feel about it, but when it is an accessory use, it's typically co-located. An associated use would not necessarily be co-located. Is that? I mean, I don't know. But exactly he did say, what and is located on the same lot as the principal use or building. Uh, so, so he, you know, so the town council did include that wording mm -hmm. to make it clear. He's adding the emphasis. Is, so that's the current language regarding yes. accessory, and so he's emphasizing that's what it says. Okay. Since that's not the case here, they're saying we should call it something else. Yeah. <coughs> that's my question. Because there may be a situation where there's more than one lot where the manufacturing occurs. Okay. So the intent so is that it is co-located, mm -hmm. either in the same building, part of the same building, or, you know, like, immediately adjacent that was the intent of our wording however however it is that he's suggesting we reword it but that's the intent all right so i think about i'm just going to ask you elaine um an accessory use is very specific by law an associated use is much, much more general right so this gives people more flexibility to have a small retail outlet for whatever it is they're making. Um, and it does specify that it's located nearby or co-located or doesn't. In the same district. In the same district. So it's not necessarily on the same property, which I, again, I don't think it, it changes how I feel about it. I'm in support of this, I think, um, I, I know, but, um, but I just want to make sure it was clear to people that it's not necessarily, I mean, I, when I first envisioned it, I envisioned it all on the same property, and I don't know if that changes things for other people. Any comments from the board? So is this a use allowed by, um, by special permit right now, or? Uh, this is, would be by right. Oh, it's not permitted no, at all. Then. The permit no, it's not permitted. Okay, okay. not permitted at all. And it would be by right, if I remember correctly, right? That's what the ask is, yes. Yeah. 
you know, is retail allowed at all now in the industrial districts? Uh, very uh, limited. Very, very uh, small size. It's essentially limited to convenience store type of. 2,000 square feet. Yeah. Okay. Is that a convenience store size? Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you, what I would ask but the, this would be 5,000 square feet, just so people know. <coughs> would, uh, I would ask the board if we want to consider making it uh, by special permit so we have a little bit of control over it. I'm having a hard time hearing you. I'm sorry. So he's uh, suggesting the special permit versus by right. That's what Dave was suggesting. I would, I would second that. Um, just no, because your comment, I associated when I was visioning it, I was visiting the manufacturer with the with the manu with the sales, and that was sort of how I had visioned it. But if we're now separating it and putting it in a whole different use building for a 5,000 square feet, I think that requires some special. So I, I just, I'm, I'm okay with it being by right. I'm actually kind of intrigued by this idea. I think it, um, and I guess I would like to go with the wording recommended by town council too. Yes. Yeah. Associated rather than assessing. Yeah. <laughs> but other, anybody else? And then how about from the public? Mm-hmm. I could go either way. Mary Arnott, 51 Teresa Road. Um, I'm a little hard pressed to come up with an example, but um, my antennae is going up again. <laughs> so let's just say I manufacture gunpowder and an associated use are guns. Can I now open up a gun retail shop? Or I manufacture um, different type of painkiller creams and stuff. Can I now open up a retail shop that sells, I heard about something recently that is associated with um, the marijuana plant, but it doesn't have the hallucin CBD cream or something like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to uh, imagine, because uh, I don't know uh, totally where the industrial A and B districts where I tried to look at the map and, and look at it. Are we opening this up to some things we might not want sold, if you just say by right? Um, I would certainly encourage you to at least say by special permit. And then there might be some other restrictions you could bring into play if it's a retail shop that really would have detrimental effects on the community. Thank you. Anybody else? Here, fun. Hello. Welcome back. We missed you. <laughs> Thank you. Or fine, that's Rula, 211 Winter Street. Um, I want to echo what Mary had to say. I think that the planning board would want to maintain the special permit. You don't know what <coughs> manufacturers coming in. Um, I'm going to pick something even more egregious. Let's say they're a sex toy manufacturer. Does yes. that mean that we're going to have a sex yes. shop open, and right? Sex toys. Um, <laughs> I think we just want. <laughs> Just what have you got against sex toys? <laughs> <laughs> against it. However, I think that you would want the ability to say yes or no. Um, so I think keeping the special permit um, ability would uh, would work a little better. Okay, thank you. Not that I'm proposing a sex shot. <laughs> <laughs> this is going in a minute. <laughs> I could list the types of manufacturing that are permitted. Awesome. <laughs> so, um, food, uh, apparel, <coughs> the food, apparel, electronics, furniture, printing, lumber and wood products, paper, converting products, primary and fabricated metal industries, machinery, transportation equipment, and instruments and related products. Those are the kinds of things that can be manufactured. So those are the only the things that can be manufactured. <clears throat> so, so, Madam Chairman, I, I tend to agree with David and her friend. Um, I, I, okay, because it, I mean, I, not about the, the, <laughs> this. Is, I'm embarrassed to even say that. It's more, it's more a function of, since it's not authorized right now, I, I um, suggest some prudence in terms of how we go about this. If, if over time that, you know, the chamber or somebody says that this should be a by right um, uh, by law, then we could review it at that time. But I think a good first step forward would be to do it by. All right, I am going to bow to the to the to the um, reasonableness of that. Um, so I would entertain a motion to utilize town council's wording because it's substantively different. 
and to put this on the warrant as a use by special permit. So moved. Second. I'll second that. Okay. Any more discussion? I just, I just wanted so, to note, yeah, sorry. Yeah, no. Nope. But along with Elaine's line, she was listing the manufacturer uses. There are also a bunch of other uses, and retail stores not to exceed 2,000 square feet is a, a use by right in there. So just wanted oh. to call that out. So they could use and there's a bunch of retail store, 2,000 square feet. Kinds of retail. Yeah, it, it goes and says to provide for the convenience of the occupants of the immediate neighborhood. So oh, items okay. such as groceries. Yeah, that's, that's the convenience okay. store. Yeah, I just yeah, wanted to call that out. All right. So, yes. Yep, thank you. I appreciate it. So, uh, and I am looking at the online one now, so. <laughs> all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. All right, we are, I'll entertain a motion to open the public hearing. It's actually not a public hearing, right? It's, a, it's just an initial visit uh, about some proposed lots off Leonard Street, and Mr. Barbieri should be here to speak to us about that. So moved. Second. I don't think you have to, it's not a public hearing. I don't know, <laughs> so we don't need to We're go all good, okay. yeah. So I withdraw. <laughs> no. Is the car wash. Good evening. Good evening. Thanks for having us. My name is Richard Bobby. I'm the developer of Leonard Street. Uh, as we're going to show you here, there's another piece of property I have on agreement from Tom Terry. Now, it has a right of way, lane, whatever we want to call it. It's in the deed. And we believe we can put another road in adjacent to the road that I did and get two lots as the plan shows. What we're looking for is a little direction, hopefully looking to put two driveways off of Leonard Street instead of constructing that whole road. Okay. Is it possible to, so the, what we had in our packet is really hard to see. I see that you have some. We have some colored, colored ones. Yeah. 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 Is it possible to get that up on the screen? Or? Oh. All right. If you can. On the table. On the table. Up facing this camera here, if you hold it up. Hold it up. Yeah. And just so you know, I look above you, I am. Yeah. This is probably the one we want to start with, though. I don't see it above you yet. Let's start with this one. Th this will show. Yep. Oh. <coughs> here it comes. Okay. Okay. Slide it so we can see the other one a little more, right? Oh, that way, right? Okay. Uh, up on the right is the road I put in. You can see the two houses on it. There's one more on the cul de sac. That road there is where the way is. It goes between McBride's house, which is the top left one, and the other house. There's two lots of me zoning there. And there's that, that road way, it's called a lane in the deed. Then we can put another like, little lollipop on the end of it and get two lots according to the Hopkinton bylaws. Okay, so this is Leonard uh, to the no, far right? No, this no. is Box Mill on the right. That's Box Mill. Right. Leonard Street would be up the top. Box Mill comes off Leonard Street. It actually might be more helpful if you point on the drawing there because then everybody can see what you're pointing to. Oh, that's a good idea. Thank you, Gary. Okay, so this is Leonard Street up here. This okay. Box Mill, which I constructed. That's the existing one. I got it. Okay. We have another way, just like we had here, we can put another cul de sac in and put another road in there and get two lots. Mm -hmm. Plus, it didn't make any sense for a lot of reasons. Drainage being one of them, just that two roads right next to each other didn't make a lot of sense. So, what we would like to propose this one. What we like to propose is two drivers. Uh, this would have a small retention, retention basin here. If we were to build a road, we would have to go all the way down here to catch basins and put a big retention down there. So. so it's just two lots because I see lot one, two, three. It's two lots of a circle in pink. The other lot, lot six, oh no, it's yeah, two lots circle in pink. There's, there would be two new lots created, lot five and lot six. To the chair, I think yeah, absolutely. one road is better than two. <laughs> lot, lot, lot 4A. Oh, oh, it's up. 
Right now, there's an easement that comes off of this cul-de-sac that is retention aid for maintenance. Okay. Okay, what we'd like to do is give this land to the school department or somebody and just have a little, it's a very short easement coming in there. And where's that so, from? From the schools? From the schools? Yeah, yeah. That's, the school, that's the road that goes down that's the there. access road. I got, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's the, uh, yeah. That'd be a very short piece. Wouldn't be a road, just be a driveway. And I think they would get like 10 acres. Uh, I've already allowed them. They put in a cross-country track down in that area. So it's yeah. the kind of land that we wouldn't be using anyways. Uh, have you uh, proposed this to the school, or do they know that you're... I did propose to the school. <coughs> uh, the maintenance man wants it. He's talking to the school committee, and as things get going, I'm hoping to get their support. If not, I would just have to put a new... Well, I'll leave that one there, essentially, and just go through this yard. Yeah, and so you were, aren't proposing changing any part of the cross country. No, no, I'm, pro I'm proposing if this goes there. through to give them that lot uh, okay. 4A, which is like nine or ten. Yeah, nine point one acres. Right. How far up does lot 4A go? Does it go to that where lot six is? Exactly that little yeah. dash black little line. Black line dash line. Yeah, that would Correct. be the uh, limit of 4A. And then lot six would be extend all the way to the to the to the. Um, Access road? Yep, six would be here. Okay. Yep. Well, it doesn't quite go to the It's a few feet off the access road, yes. That's a big lot. So there would be yes, no home on 4A, right? That would just be the drainage, right? Correct. That's no sure. home. That's the property you were talking about? Uh, no, the school. To the school. That's right. Okay. Um, and what is going to go on with lot six? Off of it? Is uh, this just, just a big lot? One of the, we're going to construct lot five and lot six. So two homes. One I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Is that is the pink? The pink portion of that lot six is owned by Terry. Okay. And the the bottom half of that is owned by Rick. I see. Put them together so just to form okay. one more. Okay. So, um, all right. What would be the impediment to doing the driveways? Why Why do you need our our? <laughs> My attorney <laughs> could make it. Maybe Link can answer. I mean, we were directed at first to go to the zoning board. Uh, and then we found out we, we applied. We were supposed to go there, and then the attorney. I, we, I think the chairman talked to my attorney and said, "No, we had to come here, and it didn't have to go there." Is that correct? Yeah, I think there's been some discussion um, zoning enforcement. So the issue is access crossing designated frontage, and with that other road in the way, what what does that mean? So I w haven't been privy to the latest discussions. Um, okay, well. I, I wasn't there for the discussion. My attorney's not here, but we filed with the zoning board. And two weeks before he was supposed to be there, my attorney was there on something else. And the chairman took him out in the hallway and said, no, you can't come here. That's not for you. This goes to the plan board, what you want to do. So that's why we're here. We thought we had to do both. We thought we had to come to, to the zoning board because we don't access it over the frontage. But technically, that green road is the frontage. And we would cross that green road away so we would access it, those lots over that frontage. Even though that frontage is not essentially going to be It's not going to be a road. That's correct. So if, will each of those lots have to be quite amount of frontage on Box Mill, or will it? No. One lot will have no frontage on Box Mill. That's, lot, lot six that's six the issue. That's actually, the, issue. Actually, the, the way it's drawn right now, Lot 5 and Lot 6 both get their frontage off that private way. Uh, the lot that's not numbered, yeah, that's a problem. Get it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, this lot here, we go with lot five. Keep in mind, though, the person on that lot would own that lot, lot five, and essentially, they, they, when they own both sides of the road, they own, like, the whole road, but the people who pass it would still have the rights to go over it. So it wouldn't eliminate their frontage. So the board can endorse an A&R plan, but then they have to try to get a building permit for it, and that's outside the board. So, yeah, the building inspector would decide. <coughs> Gary. Can, can you clarify? So lot five, as it's labeled there, <coughs> and you just said lot five did not have the... I mean, the road, the current road, it does yes. on the, the second road that was proposed, which to me that sounds like we can't do an A&R, right, because they don't have the right frontage? They, I think they do. Yeah, lot five frontage would be right here. Yeah. No, but not on the, the road not you're proposing. Not on the lot has frontage. So, I mean. so what's in between? What's in between is that green space? No, I understand the green space. 
What's in between the yep. uh, box yes. mill yep. and the green spades? Well, that's this is a retention area, pretty much most of it. That, that you can you can kind of see who's, it right here. Whose lot who, is that? Who that I own. I can't own that. Yeah. Right. Oh. And this next piece up here, these people have signed an easement to, to go across their property to get to that house. So 3A owns all the way around the circle to the other line. Uh, yeah. Three, yeah, 3A yeah, owns this. Right. Yes. Oh, yes. No, okay. You, you folks had signed an A&R plan back in December, creating this lot three. Yeah, 3A. Nice. <laughs> all right. So basically, which what you would be doing. But they, they are willing to let you Yes, we did that access? as part of the, they actually would much rather see that than the other road. Than another road. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Both, the two people up there both live in there would want two more houses. They, they like this plan. Uh, they will come in and support it or send a letter to support it. Uh, what I was just going to say, in my eyes, essentially, what you're doing is saying you're waiving the construction of this road rather than build another road and another cul-de-sac and all the drainage along with it. You're like waving that whole thing. Okay. Have, hmm. have you um, addressed with the lot 3A people whether or not they want to sell off that section of the property so everyone would have frontage on they, the they wouldn't no? have enough frontage they wouldn't have the frontage for their lot oh because they're not uh, okay. it's not enough there can i ask a question to the chair sure did you ever think about two roads being u-shaped and not being uh, dead we, end? we had talked about that when we came here in the beginning and everything everybody was 100 percent against that because <laughs> it's a lot of road well, I mean, but if you have to have a road, you should connect. I'm not saying, yeah. I'm saying if we have to have a road, but if we don't have a road, that's a different story, right? Again, I mean, that just creates a lot more pavement, a lot more maintenance, and you're going to, I mean, I, I think everybody makes out this way. I mean, the houses, people live there, it'd be much better on a driveway off a cul-de-sac rather than two roads and only like 100 feet apart. How long are so the driveways? We, Sorry. Uh, My apologies. Uh, How long are the driveways? How long are the driveways? Well, while he's measuring that, I can ask my question. Yep. What would we have to do with that? We'd have to give a waiver for that, or I don't necessarily know the mechanism. I mean, I think what we're talking about now is whether we are amenable to them finding a way to do that, right? Versus building the road, right? Uh, but I, I'm not sure I know how to do that. Well, yeah. we're looking for like just a general co consensus. If you people think that we should pursue the two driveways, then Mayor Trainer will get more involved, but he couldn't make it tonight. Yeah. Now we did talk to. Uh, uh, George McBride, who was who lives up here, he's he's here tonight. Good at that. He may want to say that. <laughs> uh, he is here tonight. At the time, he told me he would much rather see the driveways, but he can speak for himself if he yeah. wants. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Elaine, is, uh, do you, do you see an obvious mechanism or to be able to do that? It's a very uh, it's complicated. <laughs> yeah. But I, I, I think. Um, you know, if the building inspector says that, or the zoning enforcement officer says that they could issue a building permit under certain circumstances, I think that's what we'd have to go with. That's what you need. Okay. Um, any members of the public would like to speak on this? Yep, come right ahead. I'm Elizabeth McBride, and I live at number 7 Leonard Street. Yep. Where the um, proposed right-of-way is. Yep. And I'm not aware that there's a right-of-way there. On the deed that we have, the land is listed as unknown owner. That, that, so that, I don't right, understand that, why there would be able to be a right of way right okay. beside my house and the house next. Can we door. point that out? I just want to understand what we're that, talking that. about. Can yeah. we point that out on the is map? Is that the greenway? That, yeah, yeah, the greenway. That's the, 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 the road that they're hoping not to have to build. Okay. I can give you a copy of this. Okay. This describes in which house is she in? This refers to the way you be on the right? Okay. Take this and this and go put together and read the deed where it starts. And this is where it goes. And this is the lane. And that's on all the deeds. Okay. Your particular deed refers to this by saying with all the previous properties. Okay. In other words, when, when your house was made to you, it said that. But it kind of got omitted, but it says all previous easements and rights. So there's a right of way right. existing now between my house and the house next door Correct. where there's this little, like, right. just. Where Tom goes and cut through a kind of. So, how would there. you propose so to put a road? I'm just going to, I'm, I'm going to ask. Yeah. So, that's a legitimate question. It's not a question that this board can oh. answer. Thank you. I appreciate you got it. it. Um, so, 
we're coming up on public hearing time at nine o'clock. Do we want to? Yes. Can I just ask one question for yes. you, Chair? Actually, for for Elaine, and I, I should probably know this, but with if that that new uh, roadway was built, the green one as shown, um, does that require a cul-de-sac of any kind, or is it okay just to have a, a dead end street? That would be up to the board. Be dis at your discretion. How long is that? I, I will tell you, the fire department wanted the cul-de-sac on the last one. I don't know what they would say with this one, yeah. but yeah. yeah, that's 450 feet. 450. Yeah. Okay. So it could be something like a common driveway. What's our limit? 300. I, I would like to. Well, maybe maybe you could ask her if she'd rather have a road there or not, or have the driveways. Can we? What? Yes. No, 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 sir. No. Uh -uh. And um, so we are going to have to wrap up. Okay. Um, and you can wait and we'll come back to it, but we have a public hearing at 9. But I see sure. somebody who wanted to say something from the yeah. public. Yeah. yeah. Hi, uh, Nanda Barker, Hook 75 Grove Street. Um, I just wanted to give a little bit of background, like history. I know that. Um, so hold on one second. Yeah. So. Um, I'm going to entertain a motion to open the continued public hearing for Whisper Way to be continued till after we conclude this discussion. So Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Anda, go ahead. Okay, thank you. Um, so Mr. Barbieri came before the planning board it was a number of years ago now and um, had a proposal to build Box Mill. And at that point, I think it was seven houses. <coughs> and the potential to donate land to the school, and there was some discussion about a bus parking lot, and um, the neighbors at that time had a lot of concerns, and we wrote a letter and sent it to the planning board. It was signed by over 40 people um, opposed to that plan, and out of a lot of discussions, um, uh, it, you know, Mr. Barberi was approved to build the three homes, and I feel like the neighborhood was pleased with the way things were sort of uh, downsized a bit. Um, there was a lot of conversation about the impact on uh, the land in terms of the water and drainage, a lot of drainage issues, but also just concerns about uh, putting many houses in that area. Um, it's a very small, as a lot of people know, Leonard Street is incredibly small. It's almost like a driveway. And there, were a lot, there was a lot of discussion about safety vehicles getting in and out and how was that going to happen. Um, so I feel a little bit like we've gone backwards um, where we're sort of revisiting this again. And I just wanted to put that out there that there was a lot of discussion. It's all in the minutes from before and I'm sure HCAM videotaped it all. Um, that there was a lot of thought put into approving the plan the way it, the way it is today. Um, so okay. I just wanted to add that. Thank you. Thank you. Chief. Good evening. Um, just because I've been facing um, several developments similar to this, um, it's a challenge for me to comment on this for a few factors. I'll bring them up. I'm trying to like determine like the length of the roadway and if it's dead end or single access. Um, I'm trying to figure out whether it's going to have town water. I'm trying to figure out whether um, the existing roads, transitioning to new roads, whether they're wide enough, whether I can get my equipment in there. And um, this is like the fourth or fifth project in front of us where it just, I, when I looked at all the towns, I'm not sure how to solve for this. So it's, mm -hmm. it's, I just share that with you. Like conceptually, I just heard it might do this, that, or another thing. I know there's a discovery phase, but yeah. it's really put me in a difficult spot to be able to give you an honest comment to try to help everybody get to where they need to go. So there's some way where at, at some point the rules that we have to develop. Um, right now I think I'm not even sure how Box Mill got in, but just single access roads have certain lengths. I'd love to just, we've had some means where we go step one, step two, step yep. three. Two. Yes, so yeah, and I'm we would do. I'm just a little lost of how I'm looking at it tonight. Yep. The this, is a, this is a preliminary discussion, okay. and it, it, it isn't definitive at all, but I appreciate that a lot. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I, I don't own Tom Terry's property yet. I have it on agreement. But if I don't do something with him with those two driveways, I believe he has the right to put the same road that I put in. He's under the same situation as I was. 
uh, I know we had to go to town council to prove that it was away back when I submitted all that. And the road is built to me. You can speak to that to meet the all the yep all yep. the regulations for the fire department to get into that cul-de-sac to turn off line and street into box mill to turn around into box mill okay yep. but so you're talking about um it, you're talking about the box mill road has been built to the fire department specification correct right um and you are hoping to be able to somehow put two driveways across the property to use box mill as your frontage even though those two properties don't no, to use box mill as my access, the frontage would still be off of that way, the legal frontage, off of okay. that green way. Okay. Um, so I don't think this board can figure that piece out for you. Okay. Um, I think that philosophically less road is better as long as you have met the fire department's requirements for access and it's not an extraordinary request for waivers, big, long, okay. public sex, et cetera. Thank you for your time. Is that, is that I, a... I, I agree. I did it's kind of all we're looking for, Rob. My attorney will get in touch with town council, whoever, and they'll try Anybody and iron feel the differently? I want to make sure I just said it, and I want to make sure everybody feels generally. I do have so, one yeah. question for yep. clarity, though. On the map, where there, you said three... Are there six lots? I mean, that lot six, right on the bottom left. Yeah. Is yeah. your house going to be going oh. there? House number, house number four. Lot number four is the piece that's going to get to the school department. So there's five lots total. Three previous, two new ones. Okay. So it'll okay. be five, five lots four. accessing that road. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Right. So we're talking about the two new lots. Right. 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 The, the, the weird thing for me, Madam Chairman, is the fact that they're looking frontage on a hypothetical road. Right. right. No, that's, I don't know. I don't know. I, I can't. That's really what it is. I, yeah. I can't figure out how that's done for you. Well, like I said, but, we were led to the zoning board, and they said, no, we had to come here. I, I, I'm not an attorney. I don't pretend to be one. But I definitely, think, definitely a consultant attorney. Well, that's, I think the building simple. inspector, town council, and the attorneys can work that out. Sure. Okay. Cool. So, All right. Thank you. Tonight. Thank you for your time. Thank you. <clears throat> Do we have our applicant? Doesn't seem like too much house for that. I'm sorry. Did I miss that? No, it was, it was post agenda. Oh. Post oh. agenda. That's excellent oh. news. Okay, when do we have a time for them to continue to? That'll be March 25th at 9 o'clock. March 25th at 9 o'clock. Remind me what we're doing. March 25th, the public hearing starts at 7 30. Mm -hmm. And then Maspinock Woods at 8 30. It'll be Whisper Way at 9. All right. I will entertain. And do we have to change deadlines? Yeah. What's the, what? What would the um, April ten? April ten. Decision deadline. Are we doing this okay. Story? All right. So I'll entertain a motion to continue the public hearing for Whisper Way to March twenty fifth at nine o'clock, with uh, also with the decision deadline being extended to April ten. So um, Any discussion? Second. No discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Awesome. How did I miss that? That's wonderful. Back to the public hearing. Good times. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, we're up to number six. And so it goes. <laughs> and so it goes. <laughs> All right. Number six. Restaurants. Okay. At the present time, in Industrial B District, which is purple on the map, <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Could and you it's just also, have one industrial. It's also the, <laughs> it's essentially the uh, Lumber Street and Elmwood Park area. Okay. Yes. Yep. Okay. And a couple of other. And a outliers. couple. And of a few <laughs> little spots. Uh, around little the, spots. Uh, industrial B. At the present time, restaurants are allowed with 100 seats or less by right. And those with more seats than 100 seats are by special permit. Yep. So we are proposing, we, Zach, are proposing to remove the special permit requirement only for <coughs> industrial B within the hotel overlay district, <laughs> which means that <laughs> which means that it's real, much harder for people to understand, but um, <laughs> it also means that it would um, keep the special permit requirement for um, the, the 
section of industrial B that abuts the residential neighborhood. The hotel overlay district is not in that section. We switched to a lane. <laughs> so it's okay. the yellow hatched area on top of the purple. <laughs> yellow hatched oh. on top of purple. So right to the Next east to the of 495. Mm -hmm. So to the right of the interchange. All right. Okay. So not, specifically not abutting residential property. Correct. Wait. Is that the Industrial Elmwood Park, Park pretty so much? Mm -hmm. And, and it's real park is up, so here. up onto south. And, and the hotel hatched. overlay district. And all we're saying is removing the seat restriction, removing the special permit part of the seat restriction. For restaurant streets. Yes, yeah, less than 100 seats. Right. So making it easier for restaurants to get in there. Additional restaurants. So okay. there are some restaurants, of course, already in that area on the southern part, part of that. <coughs> um, but uh, it, this just opens it up to a few more. Mm -hmm. if, if I may, Mary, what's, yes, the, what's the genesis of this? Has there been feedback from the chamber that, that a business has feel that this is per pejorative or prohibitive? No, but the chamber did suggest it, if I'm remembering this correctly. Um, so it was one of the things that, again, you know, the chamber was, was going through oh, reviewing things. Sure and um, suggesting certain certain uses that um, by taking it off special permit it might help encourage businesses to come in because 100 seat restriction for a restaurant is very pretty small it's pretty small uh, is the wording's kind of weird on that the word location should be located yeah mm -hmm. to restaurants located yeah you see, uh, we should change. Yes. It was just a type. The town council fixed that. Oh, okay. was that? <laughs> Did he? And other, yeah, other than that, town council just had some technical items. You know, just, just some. I the guess. changes that the town council suggests are very, very minimal. Very minimal. Yeah. yeah. Just, just to clarify. Okay, how are people feeling about buy right? I guess I'm not really seeing the need for this without more information. I don't know, if, if somebody's coming with a, a 100 or more seat restaurant, it seems like they wouldn't mind going through the special permit process, but I could be wrong. I don't know if that's owners. Yeah, I'm that's sure kind I, didn't, of what, that's I didn't hear what you said, Amy. If it's come, somebody's coming with a very large restaurant over 100 seats, it seems like going through the special permit process wouldn't be too <coughs> onerous. So unless we're hearing from people. <laughs> I personally don't think the special permit process is onerous in itself, so I, I'm a big fan of special permits. Yeah, yeah I, I haven't heard anything that finds the special permit process to be overly burdensome. And I think by giving it by right, you're just giving people a potential business free access to do whatever they want. And I think my special permit gives the board at least some idea of what's happening and some degree of control. Uh, so as a matter of course, I would prefer to keep it as is. I agree. Agreed. It might be the, similar to the other one where we have a majority to remove it. Any there. members of the public? Uh, I just want to, I want to play devil's advocate because Good. nobody yeah. else is speaking up for the, yeah. <laughs> the yeah. other side. Yeah. For one thing, I do be believe, uh, I you know, not notwithstanding, you know, that larger restaurants probably are not small businesses, but for a small business, I believe the special permit process is a disincentive. Not necessarily super onerous, but a disincentive. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the second thing is that um, I, you know, just, just, I think there was a little hyperbole used. It's not opening it up to everybody to do whatever they want. They still have to follow all of the bylaws. <laughs> and, you know, there's, that we have a lot of things laid out pretty clearly. So businesses coming in don't get to do whatever they want to if they don't go through the special permit process. And thirdly, um, although I don't have anybody here from the ZBA, I do know that the ZBA has in the past sometimes introduced some suggestions, such as the accessory unit bylaw, that they feel that not everything needs to come through them for a special permit, because really they're just saying, yeah, okay, go ahead, signing off. And that 
and that w perhaps we go a little bit far in saying, yeah, everything should go through the special permit process. When should it, really? Um, <laughs> this so, came from the ZBA? No, this one did not. Oh. I'm just saying that it has in the past. Mm -hmm. Oh, so that's it. And this, this special permit would not go through the ZBA, correct? This is a planning board special no, permit. this is ZBA. ZBA? Everything's ZBA except yeah. the marijuana dispensaries, I think. Most, most well, all uses, I think, are through the ZBA. Yeah, so it's all ZBA. So like the, all the, the recreational uses and everything, and the manufacturing and the retail. So the ZBA process, by the way, is not the simplest process. I'm just going to say that. Yeah, Mary. I just would be in favor of special permit. Yeah, we do like to control. We do. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Might have to okay. ZBA. <laughs> um, yeah, there's a huh? What's that? I might have to, you know, put my name in for ZBA. <laughs> <laughs> it is a really good, good time, let me tell you. It's a hot time at the ZBA. If we're giving an associate member. Oh. Are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> You'd be great on the Board of Appeals. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. So there is a majority consensus that we do not want to make this by right. So th does that mean uh, just taking this off the warrant then? I think so. So I will entertain a motion to uh, yep, not would. include this on the warrant. So moved. Is there a second? Second. second. Okay. All those in favor of taking it off the warrant? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Nay. That would be me. Okay, so there's two of us. Okay. What do you guys got against sex toys and eating establishments? Do you have to bring that up? <laughs> Don't point at me when you're trying to sex toys. You're speaking our fearless leader. Listen, I got nothing against sex toys. I'm just saying, going on the record. What a Tupperware party. Um, all right, number eight, <laughs> car wash facilities. Okay. Oh, could I, oh, could I make oh. a suggestion? I, I believe, yes. I believe the um, yes, person is here the for Dover. the senior no. housing, but the person who uh, brought forward with the car wash. School. Oh, was that CBA? Yeah, yeah. Okay, the car wash is just, yeah. it was not by a citizen's so No. Okay, never mind. <clears throat> oh, okay. I was going to suggest we skip to this. You know, but okay. No, we're, we're good. So we just time. get car, car wash done? Okay. okay. Yep. So, car wash, uh, let's see, car wash facilities. By right? Um, are allowed <laughs> presently. Because <laughs> I don't think it's No, it was special for it. Um, <laughs> are presently allowed by special permit in the business and downtown business districts. This proposal is to um, allow them in industrial A district, which is South Street, <coughs> by special permit. Okay. And um, we also added some wording about sustainable, energy efficient, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. The town council had some suggestions as mm -hmm. to rewording that part of it, um, but but essentially it's about adding it in industrial A by special permit. Right. And he changed the wording with sustainable and efficient to to the extent feasible employ technologies that can serve water and electricity. Yeah, which is perfectly consistent with what we intended. Yeah. We just we struggled with that wording. <laughs> to the extent feasible. So if Any, it's not feasible, then they don't have to be energy efficient. But it's by special permits, so the ZBA gets to determine what's reasonable. Okay. Because the ZBA does a lot of stuff. <laughs> I'll be busy. What, what if we struck, what if we proposed to str we struck extent feasible um, car wash facilities that employ technologies? And then when it comes to a special, <coughs> a special permit, then they can determine whether it's feasible or not. That's... Through, through the chair, that's why we opted to go with a special permit, just because technology is totally changing. We didn't know what our water, water situation in town would be, didn't know whether car washes, when they were coming up, um, whether or not we could support them. I, wouldn't, I would not support changing the language from what it, what it says. I think it, the special permit process allows you to, to look at technologies at the time. I'm just curious if I could ask, was any discussion um, held on um, pulling it out of the, the downtown 
I was going to actually say the same thing. It was discussed. discussed. In the business district? It was discussed, and it was discussed about how, how there was um, no queuing in public streets and so on, and that's why, you know, downtown business, and, you know, was a concern. Mm -hmm. um, however, it had been pointed out that specific businesses that are downtown wanted the option and um, had asked for it to be there before, even though they're not using it. Do we know what specific businesses are interested in having it? I, I assume the gas, gas stations, stations that are downtown. I think it was the Exxon station. Mm. Right, at, can right we, downtown. Can we move the zoning map to the so that we're showing the <coughs> industrial A. Yeah. At so the industrial A is pink. Main and cedar is the pink. Is the pink. Yeah. But uh, on Main Street. Oh, you want downtown? I just see, I just want to slide it down. Downtown business. business. Downtown, downtown business, business. business district. Because that's probably sounds like what we're talking yeah. about. <laughs> that's kind of a mo. Yeah. yeah. So, so it was discussed. It was. It was. You know and. I would lean towards allowing them in industrial A, but not in the downtown. That's how I feel too. That's I pretty mean. much what I was thinking too, at the time. So. Just as a point of order, though, it would have to be two separate, two separate things, and I think taking it out of downtown business is, um, not within the four corners of oh. what we've put on to discuss tonight. Is that correct? Oh. I don't disagree with what you're saying. I'm separate. just saying I don't think it's. I don't think we can talk. We had about another that. one that was like that, right? Oh. And you were going to investigate whether we had to repost it? So maybe we'll have to repost it in order to, to do that? Can we still put it on at this point? Yep, so we have to advertise for the citizens' petition articles anyway? So, mm -hmm. okay. So we could discuss it. I just don't yeah. want to talk about uh, it. Uh, so let me just ask. I know there's three of us who would, would be open to taking it out of the downtown business district. There's four. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. So let's do that and make sure we advertise it. Um, so getting back to this one, if I might. Yes. Um, um, do we need to vote? So, just, so you'd be amending the article you already have. Because the, the warrant is closed as far as submitting new articles. Right. So. Right. We would be at, right. But we can do that. We can mm -hmm. amend the article. We can amend multiple bylaws through one article. <laughs> it's the same use. I'm, I'm still, I still want to do, I, I still am not happy with the extent feasible. I think it's too vague. I think it, employing technologies that conserve water and electricity is descriptive enough that the technologies that were current at the time would be appropriate, would be what, what they'd be looking at. Um, but what I don't like is the extent feasible because the extent feasible opens them up to, you know, plundering resources. <laughs> and using the wrong kinds of uh, soap suds, you know, um, in, in the process. And I, I don't even want to open that up to them. I don't even want to open that up, you know, here. And there's a certain, certain shops that are doing wonderfully now that employ the technologies to conserve water and electricity. And um, it's only going to get better. And so to, to put extent feasible, I think it just opens a door for, for, for people not to comply. I'll just go on the record. I'm fine with the words to the extent feasible. Anybody else? Yeah. I just wanted to go on record saying I'm, I'm against it. I don't against think, car washes in general. Yeah, I don't think we need it to be using up all that water and and the, the like you said the chemicals that could come out of it. So I'm gonna go that. So you, yeah, you you aren't gonna be in favor of correct. Right. So anything. Can, can I just comment on that? Because I, I think there's a lot of debate about car washes, and, yeah. and, and that's but that's where I like the idea of taking it out of the downtown business district. Sure. Because we're just literally swapping one for another, and we're saying that that um, industrial. Sorry, which one is it? A. That industrial A is a better place for a car wash than is downtown, downtown business district. Yeah. And right, right now, it's allowed in downtown district, in downtown business district. Right, but Dave yeah. is taking so, that yeah. one step further, right? Yes. Saying he's not, he's not in favor of car yeah. washes. Yeah. At all. As he, yeah, and that's why all the discussion around special permit, just the fact that it's close to the lake, and we wanted people to have the opportunity to discuss the the environmental impacts of having a car wash in 
whatever location in that district they wanted to have it. Right. So a question for Elaine. Have you seen any applications for a car wash in the last five years, even though that they're no. allowed by, by a special permit? No. Okay. It's a car detailing place, I think, in Industrial B, right? Isn't there behind Elmwood yes. Park? Yeah. Which one? The car detailing place. It's a repair shop. <coughs> and yeah, uh, in metal, Industrial metal B years. on Lumber Street. Lumber Street. On Lumber, yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah. But it's not a car wash. Huh? It's the sort of place I could see them that could be wanting, that, a car wanting wash. one there. Mm -hmm. If they wanted to, they could do it now, right? Industrial B. They have it by special. No. Permit. No. Right? No. Right. No. 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 no, it's not allowed. No. It's not allowed in the downtown, downtown, downtown business. Only downtown business. And business districts. So there's two districts in the business and the downtown business districts by special permit. Okay. It's going to involve a lot of discussion. You might think about postponing it a year. <laughs> if, you can. if it needs more discussion, it's an option. Uh, I don't, so I'm not actually opposed to that because I, I'm ashamed to say I hadn't even really thought about the resource use um, besides, you know, we, trying to be as efficient as possible. Gary has some input. So, I mean, uh, in general, car washes are considered even 30 40 years ago are considered to be more environmentally efficient than or environmentally friendly than washing your driveway okay. because they actually recycle the bulk mm -hmm. of the water and they mm -hmm. clean it and whatnot so and that's a that's a generalization mm -hmm. but at the end of the day water is very expensive and a car wash is not interested in just you know right running that off into the sewer or, or anything else for, for that matter. So I, I think they're, there's they're just invested in the idea of recycling it. Again, right. I'm not an expert in car washes, but but I know growing up in Southern California, where where water is a very precious resource, <laughs> they're they are allowed. Whereas washing your car in the driveway is it's not, not allowed. allowed. So <clears throat> just as a mm. little tidbit of information, my wife and I have the same conversation about hand washing dishes versus the dishwasher. Because yeah. she wants to put everything in the dishwasher, including huge pots and pans and everything. And I'm like, I could save more water by washing in my hand. It's almost the same analogy. And some of us do it both, <laughs> yeah. which is probably yes. not the right idea. Yes. No, that's good, actually. <laughs> Madam Chair? Yes. Everything should be sanitized once in a while. And, and going back to what Deb was saying um, about the wording, about the efficient use, um, I believe it was the intent at the time we were talking about it in Zach is that we would only want car washes that were using the best available technology at the time for efficient use of resources. So not again, you know, not where feasible, not, you know, if if it's a, you know, if they could make it work, but they'd have to use the best available resources at that particular time. We just didn't want the wording to um, outdate the technology, you know, right. so. Right. All right, what's the board's pleasure on this? I, Somebody make up a board. I, 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 I mean, I, I'd like to consider amending it to include removal of car washes from the downtown business district, which I think Elaine is, is going to look into and we would potentially we have to figure out what we're amending, though. <laughs> like, we have to have something to amend. The baseline. Yeah. Right. Right. So we're going to vote on it. Remove it from the downtown business district. Um, add it, as the proposal has, to industrial A, <clears throat> all by special permit, and including um, the wording about the efficient use of resources, but without any caveats. You know, it's, so we might want to look Car at Car wash wording. facilities that employ technologies that conserve water and electricity. Yeah. Okay. Um, and it would be the business and the downtown business districts that we're eliminating it from? No, I think it was just downtown business districts. Did you see? Business is near the school and, um, and the, where the Next Generation Child Care Center is. But there's also business right along, um, the, right along Main Street um, next to 495. Um, that was and rural even uh, right here too. Oh, by Price Top. Right? Yeah. Price so it's essentially the uh, it's, where where some of the, the existing uh, gas stations are yeah. and um, Dunkin' Donuts. Yeah. That's a, a business. Yes. Rural business. Rural business. Oh 
<laughs> so I will go on. Single B is business. Okay. Single so, B. So definitely Does this take a more of a holistic discussion? Possibly. Yeah. I think right. it's, it's possibly. Yeah. I'd like to understand the rationale as to why to remove it from the downtown business district. That's the next. I don't think we can talk about that now. Well, it, no one just proposed now on the amendment. It's proposed so for us to I, continue this and, and include okay. that in the discussion. Right. So I just like to understand the rationale because I haven't heard any rationale behind why it should be removed, and I'm not necessarily in favor of removing it um, at this point. Okay, so I have some rationale. Go. Um, along the lines I was saying of inefficiency and stuff like that. In addition to that, I, I think we, we should try to maintain the character of the town, small town character in some respect. I know that we're growing. I'm fine with growing the right way in the right tax base, but I'm not sure a uh, car wash is the right way to go, and I'd like to remove it. I also, to be honest with you, uh, the whole downtown is in the Water Resource Protection Overlay District, and it does kind of fly in the face of how I picture a resource protection overlay district um, utilizing a car wash. And, and all the, and I know that they'd have to do it all in the right ways, but mm -hmm. for example, those, those filling stations would never be allowed now. And to expand the uses is not necessarily something I think is, is um, attractive to me aesthetically, but also from a, a resource protection and, and congestion. Yeah, I mean, yeah. those are fair. I mean, they've, they've had the ability to, if they wanted to put a car wash yep. in, they yep. could have Applied done it now, mm -hmm. right? And you're mm -hmm. just saying, hey, you want to move it two miles down the road or what have you. I guess. And I'm, go ahead. I was going to speak up for, I think we want more walkable types of businesses downtown. We want shops and restaurants, not things that you drive up to, like a car wash. You can't, you need a car, you can't walk there. And I think just having things that you have to drive to adds more congestion <coughs> to the downtown. You already have the two gas stations. Um, Anyways, I just don't think it's a type of one encouraged. I would actually. like to suggest that we do have it as two different um, line items because well, we this, can't year, we can't we can't uh, this year, this year, but we could for a future year <coughs> because right. you're, you're you're mixing. What are you saying? That you don't want car, car washes as part of it? It's hard to tell by by removing them from one and adding it to another whether you're giving people the option to not have car washes or you know what I mean. Cool. Kind of. So should we just continue this till the next time? Then? Or we continue. Hold on one second. Or we continue the discussion to another another year. We have a more That's what holistic I would think, discussion. Which was Elaine's suggestion. Right. Mary, do you have a thought? I do. Thank you. <clears throat> if I could, I would restrict uh, car washes altogether from Hopkinton for the following reasons. One, they don't generate a lot of jobs. Um, they don't bring in a lot of tax revenue. And they really burn up a lot of water, even if they're using efficient technologies. So there's really not a lot of benefit to the town to have car washes. Um, go to Ashland, go to Milford. But if you can't restrict them all together, I would certainly restrict them from the downtown area. Thank you. So yeah. can I just make one more comment? Um, yeah. I feel like. I've heard a lot from the public on this, and there are people that love car washes and people that hate car washes. Um, I mean, we need and, to know. And, and, and so, so, I mean, it's just, it's, to me, it's one of those things where people either, either love them or hate them, and there's a lot of people that, that, that I think drive to other towns and burn a lot of fuel to get there to wash their cars. Um, so I, I'm just saying that there's, there's, it's very polarizing, but that's where I like the idea of, of of, of transitioning where they're allowed by special permit from one zone to another that is probably a, a better fit. So, so to me that, that, that maybe gives uh, the possibility for a car wash for people that want it, um, but it's moving it out of a, a zoning area of which I think for, for many people it's less desirable. But as I might add again, if, you, if you're not having as two different light items, you're not giving the people that do not want a car wash the option. You basically say, yeah, we'll remove one, but you have to add it to another. No, you no that would be a different proposal. That's right? what I'm saying, two different lines. That would items. be a different proposal yeah. for somebody to bring it forward. Yeah. yeah. Carol? Just to point out, when we were talking about it, and Zach, one of, the, one of the reasons that it was suggested to put it in industrial A <clears throat> was because it could be viewed as an amenity to the people working in that, in that district. And that it was not necessarily a freestanding, but well, that it would be freestanding, but it was an amenity service to that area. Hmm. So I'm just yeah. good insight. It's worth good insight. pointing out that 
that's where it came from or part of the rationale behind it. All right. So does anybody have a clear idea of what they would like to do? Would you like to keep it on the warrant this year and change it to the industrial A district as proposed by special permit and remove it from the downtown business district? So we would discuss it again at the next public hearing because we didn't we didn't notice the public about that? Is okay. that what people fair. would like to do? I would like to do that. I think it's worth yes. discussing again. Yeah, that's fair. Okay. All right. Perfect. All right, number eight. <clears throat> Take us away, Mary. I actually don't feel all that equipped to this is discuss a, these Osmod ones. These didn't go through Zach. Um, they did, but it was more of a recommendation from a legal perspective. Okay. And so. <laughs> all right. Um, so the, uh, so number eight, I'll just take a shot at just introducing it, and then we'll go from there. The town owns a 19-acre parcel on East Main Street. Actually, this is Elaine's um, explanation, which is excellent, which was donated to by the Legacy Farms master developer. The land is within the Osmond Overlay District that covers Legacy Farms. So any uses on the parcel that the town chooses to locate there are subject to the Osmond zoning restrictions. One of the uses that the town is considering is hosting an international marathon center, which is uh, an allowed use within the district. However, the parcel is also subject to a restricted land covenant, which means that it counts towards the minimum 500 acres of open land required in the Legacy Farms master development. The definition of the restricted land in the zoning bylaw does not include the language that allows the International Marathon Center. So the presence of it would require the removal of the 19 acres from the open land total, which was not the intent. Um, therefore, the proposed bylaw language would allow the parcel to remain in the restricted land category if the uh, International Muse um, Marathon Center was located there. So I almost see this as a little um, tiny bit housekeeping. I know it's a little bit complex, but um, it's just to make sure that the, the, um, the 500 acres of open land requirement is not interfered with by the town choosing to allow the International Marathon Center there. And that, and that 500 acres still counts for the overall... And that 19 acres, I guess it's 19, going to be a 19 yeah, acre sorry. parcel, mm -hmm. wouldn't take away from that 500. Correct, because I, I think they were banking on that. Yep, 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 yes. No such thing as a short meeting tonight. <laughs> <laughs> we have till 10. We are leaving before 10. Okay, Claire Wright, 20 in Hayden Row. Um, I'm a bit confused by this because, and maybe we just determined that what we did previously did not do the trick, but back at the town meeting of May of 2016, the planning board put forth an article which was specifically supposed to correct this. It was Article 32 um, to see if the town will vote to amend Article 26, Open Space Mixed Use of Zoning Bylaws uh, uses by deleting the N in the, in the residential subdistrict column for the row beginning with the terms cultural uses and inserting in the place of SP special permit. It was a whole table of uses and whether it was allowed yes, no, or special permit. And um, I even have noted right here in my warrant uh, that this will allow the International Marathon Center, that this was put up for the Marathon Center um, to be allowed under the, the, the term cultural uses covered the Marathon Center. So I think that it's allowed, right, if I understand it correctly, but it would take, it, it's, it, is not included in the specific Osmod restricted land definition. So there would be some conflict about that total of 500 acres that the Legacy Farms Master Plan owes right. to the town for restricted land. So they'd be reduced to 4 So that, n that 19 acres would, would change that total and they would have to find 19 other acres. So are we basically saying that this was a new revelation since the 2016 amendment um, because I know that at that time and I spoke with Tim Kilduff tonight about it, he's the prime spokesperson for 26.2 in the Marathon Center, um, that at that time the word cult between active and passive recreation and the word cultural uses covered 
or he believed it covered, and the town at that time believed that those terms covered what the International Marathon Center would do. Um, I, I guess I'm a little nervous about adding the word educational if we don't need to because, um, you know, we just had a Dover <coughs> Amendment discussion and this is controlled by the town, but I start worrying would this open some doors that a different educational entity could come in and claim under under Dover Amendment that they're now allowed or have, have a right to open up shop on this town town land I'm, I'm a little worried that is this going to in some way by using that word if cultural will do the job is it going to open us up to possibly losing control of that piece of land um, I had the same thought so are we we own it because it's it's deeded right. to the town so no other use can come in and say you have to let us use it right we own it and I know we're not supposed to do a lot of back and forth, and, and I know we own it, but like in this, in the sheet for tonight's meeting, in the third place, it talks about restricted land may be owned by uh, a nonprofit entity. It may le be leased to a third party, um, in such cases by use is permitted. And I mean, I guess the town would have to say, yes, we're willing to. But if it was an educational entity, could they come in and say, you have to give me this permission? I'm, the word educational just worries me. And I'm uh, previously cultural, between the cultural and the act of passive recreation was supposed to cover the needs of the marathon center. Turn it over to Elaine. Elaine, any sense? And then I'll let you go, because we're not supposed to do a lot of back and forth. But I, I am worried about that, yeah. as was Tim. I don't know that there's harm in removing the the educational component. It was something that town council suggested. Um, you're right. We do talk about cultural uses, and that covers mm -hmm. the use. Mm -hmm. um, well, again, just just to close it out, when I spoke with Mr. Kilduff tonight, he said when he spoke with, I guess it was the building inspector, um, he did not tell him that there was any deficiency in the simple uses of cultural. So I'm I'm just a little worried about that. As as is he, I don't want to open us up to possibly lose a measure of control for that. I'd be okay with removing the yeah. word education. Education is not needed. Yeah, yeah I don't fine. Have an issue. Should we check with town council or for next time? So it's just proposed language from town council, right? right? It's and I looked in the bylaw. We do call it cultural uses and it includes a museum and you know they have an educational component. I think that would be covered. Okay. I I would move to remove the educational. I had the same concern as Claire did when I read it. Mm -hmm. Was to. So I'll make, Somebody's so going to come in and take our no. property. <laughs> no, not Just that. Just go with it. Just go with it. So, so I'll Just make it. Just that it, it <coughs> a bigger, a bigger allowance than was necessary for what we were trying to accomplish. Uh, we're allowed to use it for whatever we, we have a majority for that, don't we? Have so we can build a school. I'm just saying, every museum I have ever contemplated or gone into is both cultural and educational, but. Um, that's, that's I guess I'm too. fine taking out the educational, but I'm not worried about it being there for real. I think the whole idea of a museum is to be educational. So. Uh, mm. The town uh, does control the parcel. So, so I'm sorry, the town does control the parcel. I have no problem with yes. it. Yeah. So, so, so I make but this. This language doesn't just refer to that one parcel. That's it's true. only within the Osmond, right? The restricted land definition. It is only it's within the Osmond, but it's not just that 19-acre parcel. All it's all the restricted That's land. True. Right, right. Well, were, we, were we wanting to have the opportunity to build a school there if we wanted? Maybe that's, was that a reason to include educational? Because it says other municipal use. Oh, would, would we have ever wanted to put a school in there, Amy was saying? Well, that, that's, it says I think it falls under other municipal. I do, too. So we as a town could put a school there if we wanted okay. to. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, I'm sure. When you're ready, I can take... Yeah, we got to be quick. Go ahead. I'm a little bit confused on this one. Um, Mary Arnott, 51 Teresa Road. Because if you... I mean, an international marathon museum would be wonderful, but what if it doesn't happen? What's the Im implications for changing this? Uh, if this is municipal use land only, right? Is no, that, it's not. 
it's restricted it's restricted land and it's got a, a whole big definition of what it can be used for okay so are you setting this up just for the marathon center but what if it doesn't happen then what? That it's still restricted land by all the definitions it can be used for recreational purposes passive active it can it, there's a whole big list for another type of museum uses. Uh, yeah. yeah this is just to, this is in my mind this is just allowing a museum that the, the museum we're talking about is the marathon museum um, and not taking away from the number of acres that is set aside as restricted land but as, as an alternative, could you say, could you amend um, the legacy agreement to say that they don't have to give 500 acres? They could give 481, Oof. and then, <laughs> yeah. So that is certainly a possibility, but not one we there. really want to. the car wash in. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's just a <laughs> That's not happening. <laughs> no. It's just that it, it opens up the whole area of restricted land, as I see. Okay. okay. Yeah. All right. Tell me. Tell me what the board's pleasure is. So I'd like to make a motion that we <coughs> approve the language in number eight, uh, but remove the word educational from the use. The word or. Or educational. <laughs> or educational. Sorry. I was talking about. <laughs> All right. Yeah. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. Any abstentions? Okay. So we have gotten we've gotten rid of that onerous <laughs> education word. <laughs> I won't use the other thing we talked about. <laughs> that was I'm blushing. <laughs> All right. Number nine. The Osmond Overlay District Senior Housing <laughs> Development Issues. Um, Residents of age restricted housing and affordable housing. So this is something from town council that he has identified as a problem? Uh, that the developer initially the identified. identified. Yes. Okay. So um, can you can you walk us through it as simply as possible? I'm gonna turn it over to you because <laughs> you're you're the professional. Um, and also I just wanna the chart wasn't necessarily clear to me. I think I have an idea of what I want. It was to. my attempt to try to make it clear. Okay. I don't know if it succeeded or not. But. So the, the problem is that the zoning <coughs> requires in the age-restricted development, which is um, uh, right at the, the where the, uh, the commercial was going to be and now is um, going to be age-restricted, 180 units. So the zoning bylaw requires both 10% um, affordable housing and also it states that um, there can be no uh, residents under 18. Um, this has become a problem because the state agency that approves the affordable housing units won't do it with the restriction on um, age, age restricted children under under 18. So, in order for the developer to comply with the zoning, you can't you can't comply with the zoning. So, either the affordable housing restrictions have to change, or the uh, the age restriction has to change. And by age restriction, I mean that the prohibition on children. Right. So you can still require 55 and up, but you can't say there shall be no children. And we would have to allow children in all 180 units. If Pardon? We would have to allow children in all 180 units, not just the 18 affordable, I right? I think so. Town Council was going to investigate that, and I have not heard back uh, from them. We can follow up with that, but I, I think it has to be across the board. Okay. All right, and we, we are at least going to change the number delineator 18 to match the uh, in parens 18, right, in all the discussion, right? Um, so it says 20 in words and 18 oh, yes. in the parentheses, mm -hmm. so that is That's at least for sure going to be fixed. Yes. Okay. Um, would you like to speak to this, sir? Uh, Vin Gately, Heritage Properties. I'm the developer at the Trails. Uh, I think a couple of meetings ago, uh, I was here and I just uh, <clears throat> pointed out that that um, uh, restriction that this project was passed with that uh, prohibits people under 18 from residing there is a very important uh, kind of marketing aspect to our community. Uh, we have, I'm not supposed to say, but we have several buyers right now, uh, most of which come from Hopkinton and the master deed that they 
uh, have in their contract to buy their, their new home does um, <clears throat> state that 18 and unders are not allowed to reside. And that happens to be a pretty popular uh, view uh, with our buyers. So uh, I think what you need to do is, um, my understanding is these amendments will not apply to us because our project was passed before. And um, however, the affordable housing aspect of this is, is an issue, as Elaine mentioned, the state won't allow those units to be counted towards the, the, the town's housing inventory as affordable units with that restriction in there. So <clears throat> it seems to me that um, what needs to happen is, um, and I believe that's one of the options here, is that affordable housing units would no longer be required in 55 and over projects going forward. Uh, that puts us into in a little bit of a quandary because we were we were passed a year ago with that age restriction in place and we hope to uh, to continue that so <clears throat> anyways my attorney Peter Barberi couldn't be here tonight he had a conflict but um, I just wanted to mention our, our view on this and we also are looking at our options right now and are about to submit our, our calculation on how, how the payment in lieu of the affordable units should work. Um, I've read some language in, in the amended article and I believe uh, <clears throat> we don't think that works. It doesn't work for our project. It just makes us, it just puts, a, basically a, it creates a, a greater penalty on us than if we had gone forward in with the affordable units, which now we're finding we can't because of the, that um, So for you restriction. in your project, just to be clear, and you'll come back, we're gonna, I'm sure we're gonna have to continue this to the next time we talk about these articles. Um, you would, you want to maintain the age restriction seriously, to, to not allow under 18 in there. And you would prefer that we solved it by uh, allowing you to make a payment in lieu of the affordable housing units. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. I mean, I have my buyers have a master deed right now that that have that in there, and I'm not prepared to go back to my current buyers and and, and make that change, knowing how they feel on it. Um, and I think it, that would just hurt the marketability of our project going forward as well. So we would like to keep that in place and <coughs> work out some sort of a payment in, in lieu of the affordables. Okay, thank you. Yeah, go ahead. So I would be concerned about removing the restriction for children under age, teen, uh, under age 18 because that's a lot of units for that to apply to. And then, you know, I don't want to lose the affordable either. So I wonder if there's any opportunity to build affordable units elsewhere so they wouldn't be on on the property? You know. That is something that's within our bylaws otherwise. Is that something that we could... It can't be a legacy farm. It has to be somewhere else. It has right. to be somewhere else. Because there's a dwelling unit cap. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, and my concern is if we're lumping these, um, these monies that are donated for affordable housing elsewhere, we're all of a sudden... Isolate. I'm not sure, you know, if this is how it would go, but there's the potential that we'll be isolating affordable housing into one, um, one development. Yeah. What I liked about what Legacy Farms was doing is it's sort of integrating. Nobody really knows what who's the affordable and who's not, um, and that's a really nice feature of a, of a housing unit of a of a development. Um, so my concern is that. Um, and statistically, I actually looked it up, statistically, as the age group and age bracket increases, the um, younger children living at home reduces all the way down. So for every 700, just from the statistics I read this afternoon, for every um, 100 um, <coughs> housing developments, there are seven children in that development. So the concern as to whether we have, you know, the 18 in the, 
in, in your deed or not, I think is, is sort, of, sort of a technical aspect because um, I don't think it would be grossly taken advantage of. The second you put the fact that they're 55 Hopkinson and Hopkinson breaks every rule. 55 <laughs> and plus. I just, I just want to caution you, right? Hopkinson yeah. breaks every projection and every rule. We have, sadly, we have a very attractive school system. Yeah. It's unfortunate. We are burdened with a ter terribly functional, fabulous school system. Well, then, then what we would do, if, if that's the case, is to raise it to 62 plus. Mm -hmm. um, and that further reduces it down the chain of the number of people that are likely to be to, to be in that development. So I just want to statistically. Did anybody who came tonight want to make sure they, they I know we're going to have to continue this. So Mary, go ahead. And then Irfan, I saw you as well. I just want to make sure you, you're welcome to come back the next time, but maybe you won't have to. OK, I would um, not want you to remove the restriction of uh, 55 or older and allow people 18 or younger because we do break all the rules in Hopkinton with people moving in and it's very easy for somebody even age 62 or 55 to have a daughter who has a daughter who has a grandchild I mean there's so many ways I have that, a kid in the school system and I'm over 55 I'm just that's saying. right there's so many ways that children under 18 could oh, yeah, be in those 180 units and you could have multiple and we already have too much impact on our schools so I think it should stay and by the way I just want to also say I love children I just want oh yeah I do too. <laughs> I just believe want to me I, but I would I'll leave the 55 years or older not allow the 18 and allow them to make a payment okay we're fine Um, I love the idea that Amy has um, for off-site um, affordable housing units. Um, I did, I had attended one of the affordable housing committee meetings, and <clears throat> this question of payment in lieu is, you know, they're sitting on a big pile of cash, and, and there's a big question as to how do they use that money. Mm -hmm. um, I love the idea of, of instead of getting a payment in lieu, develop another property off-site, mm -hmm. so that can add or to our inventory. Or redevelop another property. Or redevelop yep. another property. Because yep. um, right now, there's there's very, the Affordable Housing Committee is kind of struggling with, with how, what, what do we do with this money? Right. And yeah. do we really want a committee going into the development business or are we even prepared exactly. for that? And, and mm -hmm. that's and that's the other thing is like you don't have people who are in the development business running the committee. So Right. Right. Um, I have the same concern and the same I, I favor the sa the same approach as in typical uh, typically is to have uh, developers, you know, help us build our stock and specifically it's nice if we could you know sprinkle it around town as you said Deb right the concern is that you you have you know a development that's just identifiably the affordable housing development thank you thank you um, I, I do think that um, this is a longer conversation and, and pretty complicated um, does anybody uh, agree that we should continue it to our next public hearing on such matters? I would concur with that. I would agree. Agreed. Okay. And so the next public hearing that we're doing on, um, on zoning articles is March 25th at 730. Um, and we, we skipped over, and I did that on purpose, I skipped over the first one assuming that the petitioner would come tonight and the petition didn't come, so I want to make sure that we know that we have not done number one on our list for tonight, and that's going to go forward. Um, and then um, just process-wise for the um, citizens' petitions that are in front of us that include signatures of board members, um, I happen to be one. I have signed the citizens' petition to change um, the board of selectmen to the select board. So. I'm going to ask you to conduct that conversation, Mr. Vice Chair, and I will not be on the board. I, I strongly feel like if we're, we're signatures on a petition, we need to be off the board mm -hmm. um, when it is discussed. Sure. So that also impacts um, three other members when we do the other two discussions. Certainly, um, you should be prepared to speak to 
your proposed um, articles. And this is for the 25th, correct? This is for the 25th, for March 25th. Um, so you'll need a quorum of five other members present, correct? Or you only have to step down for one article? It's a simple, right, I'm only stepping down for the select board article, okay. and I'll be back. Um, and, um, and I know that um, I know that the two uh, the two proposed citizens petitions on the the grow the development the growth moratoriums are attracting an awful lot of attention and interest. Um, they are a surprise to most of us, um, and I think that um, I think we need to be really <coughs> contemplative. You you folks need to be prepared to speak to them, hopefully in a really constructive way. Um, and I'm going to encourage everybody who has an opinion um, on them to come with um, with their opinions and uh, and try to look at this as an opportunity to have a really rich and constructive conversation because I think that there's a little bit of reaction happening um, to them, which I understand. Um, and I've asked um, Elaine to also prepare just some history um, and also some stats and data on how this might impact us, you know, what this is, if this is actually, um, this development uh, moratorium is actually addressing a problem that we're seeing. Um, and then we're going to need to know and uh, um, what it means for the Osmud Legacy Farms development and whether or not that's even something that um, we can sort of legally bandy about it. Those are my thoughts on those two. So, um, so I um, expect that uh, it will be a well-attended meeting on the 25th. Um, and oh, the other thing is I wanted to um, suggest to the board that we have an opportunity, we have those two articles um, that are going to inspire a lot of attention and conversation. And we have an opportunity between now and town meeting to think about how we want to um, participate in that conversation, no matter what we decide as far as supporting the articles outright. Um, it is, um, zoning is our business, zoning is our process, um, and we should hopefully have a lot, that we be prepared to put the, the legwork in to speak to this at town <laughs> meeting. <clears throat> Now that it's in front of us, <laughs> suddenly. And there is one thing you forgot. I forgot. We, a bunch of us went to um, the Growing Locally meeting um, that was in Acton, and it was immensely interesting. It was. And um, they talked about the percentage of farms um, and how in Middlesex County, we, we only have 7% of farms <coughs> in our county, and that essentially we're going to run out of food if we don't start to provide. I mean, Massachusetts could essentially isn't providing enough food internally. Um, and so they talked about the in incentives of people to maintain farms, to pass farms down, to farm share. It was really, it was a very nice um, experience. There, there actually were some really good points, and, and I ended up in the emergency room that night, so I kind of lost track. Oh. But yeah, I had the flu, yeah, you despite my shot. Oh. Um, so um, there was some things I wanted to bring forward too. So I wouldn't mind putting that on a future agenda to just uh, bring that the summary of the materials there because there were some really there were some pretty good ideas. The Chapter 61A process that one of the towns has delineated I thought was really um, yeah. worth looking at mm -hmm. um, in more detail as well. Okay. Um, can we move the minutes really quickly and then mm -hmm. adjourn? I will entertain a motion to move the minutes of, and I've lost my agenda. On the January 14th minutes, I did January 14th. Uh, already give um, Kobe a few very minor typos. Just Minor typos. So I'll entertain a motion on the minutes of January 14th with Mary's corrections for the minor typos. The, and uh, I, had, I had a few too. And Deb, right, minor yes. typos? Minor, uh, minor, minor was change. January 14th. Change. My, minor change. Minor input. Is everybody so, comfortable with that? Should we also clarify 
um, Ms. Towner had. Is that the 28th? She's on the Sorry. 28th. That was, yeah, that was the 14th, too. She it was the 14th? 14th? Yeah. Okay. Oh, girl. So no, I have, I have the 28th. The 28th. Okay. okay. So, a uh, motion on the minutes for January 14th with Deb and Mary's minor typographical wording changes. So moved. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, and then uh, Katie Town sent us an email that said the wording uh, developed but be landscaped and should have been left undisturbed. And, Kobe, did you make that change already? Well. I, okay. Yeah, thank you. First, first it was mentioned landscaped, and then, then I checked, and then later on she more or less hinted at undisturbed. So, I'm very comfortable mm -hmm. putting it back because I, I yep. remember her. That's the right focus group right. point. Um, any other changes or suggestions for January 28th? So I'll entertain a motion on the minutes from January 28th as amended. Um, so moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Thank you. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? I'll entertain a motion Before to. Before you adjourn? Yeah. If you could vote to continue the zoning hearing to March yeah, 25th. Oh, oh, thank, thank you. you. I think it was here, Fran. Was it? Or oh, the 25th? Yeah. No, it's the 25th. Excuse me. Patrick. Yes. March so I, I will enter. Thank you very much for that. Entertain a motion to continue tonight's um, public hearing on the zoning articles to March 25th at 7 30. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? <coughs> Any abstentions? Now I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. So moved. Second. 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 All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you all. So when our next meeting is no. March something. I don't want to 25th. 2 no. 11. 11.